Toronto of the season. Hello, everybody. It's the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello, Chick. There's Pat Godwin. Hey there, Chick. He's in the um, performance room. You got that right. There's Josh Arnold. Fixer. I am. Huh? I anxiously await your, await your performing. My performing in the yes. performance room. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and uh, there's Willie Griswold. Hey, hey, man. As I live and breathe. What How up, y'all? We didn't think you were coming back, honestly. I got it. I mean, not working is much better than working, you guys. <laughs> it's the best. You got Especially when pay. It really is. Yeah, yeah, it rules. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. You're not just out of work. That's L.A. out of work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. I hope you had a nice vacation. We'll have to get an update on what's happening in California. Well, they cheered the Lakers on is what I understand. Yeah, man, that Laker game was a lot of fun. Yeah. That was great. That was so many series ago. That was uh, Lakers-Grizzlies. Yeah. Way back in the day. Not uh, Lakers-Warriors and definitely not Lakers-Nuggets like it is now. And uh, yet uh, the Celtics win yesterday, and uh, they go on to face the Heat in the Eastern Finals. But uh, speaking of the Grizzlies... Charles oh, Morant's in trouble again. Again? <laughs> With a gun. Just again? <laughs> on social media. Yeah. Is he the strip club guy? Mm-hmm. He just can't uh, stop flashing guns he? in videos. Yeah, I, I think it's... Well, yeah. anyway, he's the guy on Instagram who had the gun a while ago, and he uh, said, I have to look at myself and <laughs> yada, yada, a couple of weeks, well, a month ago, maybe. Maybe if that long. And it happened again yesterday. And the NBA's looking at it. So oh, he's been suspended until further notice. TFN. So there you go. Wow. Waving okay. a gun around. All right. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I'm not partying unless we got a gun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. That always ends well. I Keep give, going you, the backyard. I give you Chicago and the band, Chicago and Terry Calf. Oh, it always oh ends with that, Lord. Cool. Well, that's what happened. Sorry. Um, uh, see, you should have been messed with a BB gun. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, let's just move forward here. Uh, what, a little a couple sports teasers. The Tater at 51. No one's calling him the Tater but me. Mm-hmm. Jason Tatum, 51, 13 rebounds. Celtics beat the Sixers. 112-88 to advance the Eastern Conference Finals to take on Willie's Miami Heat. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, now, you call them Willie's Miami Heat. Do you want to explain why? No, I'll have uh, Willie explain why. Go right ahead. So, so way back in the day, right after the play-in, I put a $40 bet on Miami to win the NBA Finals. Yes, sir. Just thinking they might win the first round. Right. And then I was going to cash it out for 50 bucks, maybe for 60 bucks. And they keep winning. They keep winning. I can cash it out for 140 or I can let it ride no. for the potential Miami Heat championship $4,000 in 2023. Oh. If they win the championship. What if, if they, they make it to the final game? You still make it. I mean, to I the don't final win series. anything, but I could potentially cash out for a little bit of cash. Oh, okay. But the bigger payday if I waited out for the final. So we'll see. You don't think oh. it'll be the Lakers Heat? Uh, maybe. We'll maybe see, it's man. It's possible. Lakers uh, Nuggets uh, tomorrow night. They're all saying that uh, Lakers in Denver at. 5,208 or whatever the hell that is. Um, they're up a mile, Tom. It's mile high city, my friend. That's yeah. right. And uh, they're saying the all the Lakers and the old guys <laughs> on the Lakers aren't going to be able to breathe at that elevation. So they're really going to have trouble playing in Denver. That's they're going to have help from the refs. You know that. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's big, yeah. Well, that's right. The, the, the tri- Pentaveret know who's going to win anyway. So. <laughs> it's the Tripartite right. Commission. The Tripartite uh, Division of the Pentaveret, which uh, uh, includes uh, uh, <laughs> Colonel Sanders, uh, the Rothschilds, the Gettys. Yeah, we all know it. And the NBC uh, orchestra, they're in on it. <laughs> you know, it, it. Who was the number one seed going into this? Uh, Milwaukee Bucks. They right. lost a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, so they when were you say missed, they uh, say they don't know. Well, both the Heat and the Lakers had to uh, go through play-in games to get right. in the tournament. Oh, very exciting. And here we are. Uh, by the way, Ace, I don't know if you saw this about uh, Tom Brady. Oh, wants God. to become. Can we a, go uh, through one day without talking about Tom Brady? <laughs> he wants to become a part owner. A minority owner. Oh, if he's a minority, it's the first time he's been a minority. Um, <laughs> That's what we're looking at, people. The phrase we're m- a minority now. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> Does this mean I get free tuition? Oh, uh, wow! It, yeah. That went horribly wrong. There's the joke, there, Chick. There's the yeah. setup. There's yeah. the punch. Yeah. Oh, it's just the word, the phrase. <laughs> it says Brady 
let's see, wants to acquire a minority stake in the Las Vegas Raiders. So, uh, we'll I see. say he can if he gets his hair cut like Mark David. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw another picture of that guy. It's even worse than it was before because he's fatter now and uglier. <laughs> I was amazed when I saw his wife at the game. He married up. Oh, you think? Well, you think? You were surprised that God. a super rich guy married yeah. a hot lady? Right. The thing is, never. The Wasn't thing is, he is. You ever see a super rich guy with an ugly wife? No. <laughs> That's the guy that has integrity. I love a rich guy with a fat, ugly wife. That guy has integrity. Yeah. That guy, he really, something means something. No, to him. he's got. Yeah, except he married her for the money. He's got a, <laughs> oh. he's got a hot babe on the side, I yeah. can tell you that. Um, it says here that uh, <laughs> Brady's purchase of a minority stake in the Raiders would mark the second Las Vegas-based franchise in which he has invested. He's still he talking. acquired a minority ownership share of the WNBA's oh, Las Vegas wow. Aces in March. About Tom Brady. That's but it also says he would have no say in the running of the team. So oh, no, Exactly. That's no. why I don't, He's it's a, a non-story to me. I'm like, okay. But <laughs> I don't understand why you would do that then. Do you, how do you cash out? Well, you get a little something. You get a minority interest. So yeah, you, you get, must. But you I mean, get minority you... income. Okay. It, 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 you, don't you Long-term make, investment. Don't you make as much as you've invested? According I don't know. To, you know, it's like uh, Willie invested in the Miami Heat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's oh. like if, if Chick bought part of uh, the uh, Washington team. He could cash out with the new owners. Yeah, right now he'd yeah. be making money. Man, I wish you'd shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I wish like one day. Just like, wow, I didn't hear Ace at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's really now, hard. as minority owner, could uh, yeah. Brady appoint himself quarterback maybe for a couple of games? Oh, he no. would have no say. That's the whole thing. Okay. But if he does this, this means he could not come back. Minority oh, owner. Man. Okay. No say. Uh, maybe right. 10%. Oh, that's a good question. Somebody who would have even look, given a brief look at this story. How much percentage is he going to uh, yeah, own there, liar. Einstein? Doesn't say. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> huh. <laughs> you should have known that before he opened your trap. No, no, I didn't know. I already, I never said that I knew that. Man. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm going to start doing. You guys ask me, well, how many players are uh, left-handed? I'm going to go, you know what, I... You know, I never said I would give you that. I never right? said I'd give you that. Info. Oh, hang on. It's Ace again. Yes, Ace. When you review the XFL championship, I won't interfere. Did that happen this past weekend? Yes. Yeah, the D, uh, D.C. defenders got upset by the other team. <laughs> yeah, D.C. was 10-1, and one and uh, our own team was 5-6. I and six. can't. I can't stand it. <laughs> this, has, this has to stop. This is the A.S. Cosby show now. This can't continue. Final score, 35-26. <sighs> How are the TV ratings for that going? I have not checked. <laughs> Were there people but in the stand? Were there people a in the stand? A guy comes to the house with a package, Ace. Do you go, hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the package. How's your do day? Do you do that? How was your day? <laughs> That's more? wild. <laughs> uh, wh wh where, where was the game held? In San Antonio at the Alamo Dome. <laughs> were there people there? Yeah, the lower bowl, bowl was full and The really? Rock was there. And... Well, there you go. Of course it was uh, successful. The Rock was there. <sighs> what have you just been handed? <laughs> 9.30, Saturday night, my daughter and I in the grocery getting a last-minute Mother's Day card. She finally found one. I said, as I was pointing, sort of snapping my fingers, trying to remember, grab the uh, card sleeve. Let's go. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tom. The, uh, the envelope. envelope for the card. Oh, okay. Card sleeve. Okay. All right. Um, I thought it was a sports bulletin. That way it was rushed in here. <laughs> <laughs> See, I wouldn't have said anything about that. <laughs> right, right. You you did ask him, hey, what's that you got in your hand or whatever the hell? And once again, this being primarily radio, I know we're on YouTube, but primarily radio, no one knows what we're doing. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we have uh, Christy, I'll talk to you. Boy, what a, uh, that's what okay. I, I can morning. wait. Well, I'll tell you some of these headlines. <laughs> what a mess. How many farts does it take to fill a balloon? Oh, no. Uh, so they, a scientific study of that. Once again, proving it, someone can get a grant to do anything. <laughs> um, we have uh, an article about um, the new trend, the so-called everything shower. Yeah. I'm a big fan of a long, nice long shower. But this is even more. This is the everything shower. Well, you don't do anything in the shower. You're not even naked you in the shower. You don't even have... naked in the shower. You don't even have to wash your hair. What do you do? <laughs>
You don't have lights in you there. Know I, think we should, no I think we should just fire Ace. Did you hear the laugh at that guy? I... That was unnecessary and, and negative and mean. You know what? I disagree, but if that's what you want to do, Tom. <laughs> you yourself have admitted that you only have two fabulous products in the shower, so. Baby shampoo and ivory soap, that's ladies it. and gentlemen. Yeah. That's what all a man needs. <laughs> You know, she's she's right. You, you don't have to condition. No. Not do you have, really. one of the, you have one of those Luftwaffe scrubbers? Or the you don't tube? shave. You don't shave in the shower, do you? I used to. I can't oh. in the new one. <laughs> well, Did you say why? you can't why? shave why? in oh, the shower? Oh, you don't have a light. That's why. Well, right now, there's light doesn't work, A, so it's dark in there, and B, uh, uh, there's no mirror in there. Oh, she wouldn't let you put a mirror No, up? no, I haven't had time to oh. deal with that. I will. But right now, I want to talk about uh, something positive, something happy, like sunshine in the spring. It's great food. It's always the season for great food, and uh, HelloFresh is paying attention to what I guess I can use the word seasonality. I get a great taste of spring. Chef crafted, uh, chef crafted recipes featuring essential ingredients and the new offer from HelloFresh. 16 free meals. You've got to use a special code as part of a special package. HelloFresh.com slash BT Show. 16. How does HelloFresh work? Well, let's see. You choose from more than 50, uh, excuse me. You choose from more than 40 weekly recipes, and uh, they also have hundreds of side snacks and desserts. And HelloFresh does the shopping for you, and they know it's okay to be picky, so they've got all kinds of options from uh, fit and wholesome to family-friendly, even vegetarian, something that will fit your particular, let's just call it food lifestyle. Willie, what you been working on over there? Check out the sweet chili pork bowls with bell pepper and candied peanuts. HelloFresh sends you nine ingredients. Put those together in six easy steps. In just over a half hour, you are enjoying this delicious bowl that you made at home with help from HelloFresh. Some of the stuff you can put together in just 10 minutes. Uh, Jess Hooker last week made us, you missed it, Willie, what were they called? Fireball? Was it fire? Firecracker, firecracker meatballs. Firecracker meatballs. Yeah. I am not kidding. They were the best meatballs I've ever had. Mm. They were so delicious. So HelloFresh, great food, and uh, they do the shopping. They do the measuring. You put it together. It's that simple. And a special program right now gets you 16 free meals with free shipping. The code is BTShow16 at HelloFresh.com slash BTShow16. That's HelloFresh.com slash BTShow16. Coming up in the news, Josh, for you, Loch Ness Monster Hunter in the headlines, plus the most popular baby names for 2022. And um, you'll be you'll be surprised at a handful of them, some oddities, some good old common ones, et cetera, et cetera. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, guy, it's Kid Tarmac. One scoop. <laughs> big scoop. That's a huge scoop. Two. That's not, two, a, that's not two a big scoop. blender. Okay. Three. Three. Hey, don't, Three. No, no, you, you're not going to get enough run out of room. Space. No, it's you're not. Enough, yeah. No, this no, is you're that's perfect. Uh -huh. There's milk right there. Milk and pour about. Uh, you want to put a little whey protein in there? A little there? more than that. A little more than that. Oh, yeah, come, come on. on. There we go. Hey, a little more. All right, okay. that's good. Now load it with Oreos. Yeah. All right. right. We have so we have vanilla ice cream <laughs> in the blender, <laughs> not in your mouth. Don't eat the Oreos yet. All right. How many got there? I don't think I've had an Oreo in uh, years. That one and another stack that Is high. Is that an even number? Oh, for Did goodness Did you count them? Sake. How many got there? It's bad luck to mm, not number of Oreos. It's a bad luck, Chick. Did you All count right, them? that's enough. No, it isn't. Keep going. Shut your hole. You're, you're, <laughs> this is our shake. You're not going to be able to drink it. You're yeah. going to have to eat it with a spoon. That's fine. But we're what is that, 15 Oreos? Oh, this is uh, it's going to be perfect. It'll go right up to the top. <laughs> Peanutopolis. That's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> All right. Put a Klondike bar there. Come on. Throw let's in go. the Klondike what bar. What you doing for a Klondike bar? Mm -hmm. I'd kill some blood. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a little it. more milk in. Klondike Come bar's on. in there. Blah, 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 blah. All right. There, there we go. go. There you go. Right. That's there good. Go. Just okay. let it go. Oh Keep God. going. Look at, that. Look at that. That's heaven. Look, Look at that. that. Snickers bar. Look at that. <laughs> Snickers bar <laughs> looks like it's swirling around yeah. the bottom of a toilet bowl. Yeah. You're putting more ice cream in there? Yes. There you go. Now blend her up there. Oh, one more. Come on. <laughs> At least it's an even number. Okay, right there we go. <laughs> now, those are the peanuts trying to... Uh, Thank you. Now, Bob, sip that over there by your microphone. Let's hear, uh, hear your I'll, I'll judgment I'll have a taste. on that. <laughs> Tom has to drink it. We though. should market this. Mm. Wow, it smells very good. Thank you. Oh, yeah. That is very good. Mm. Tell me this is not good. That is very good. Very chocolatey. See, this is much better than your shit. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> Why don't you throw some protein powder in that? So at least you get some protein. 
And why don't you run up an alley and shade. yell fish? How about that? <laughs> at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, man, this is Donnie Biker. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Time now for Great Moments in NFL History. The year 1976. The place, Miami, Florida. It was Super Bowl X, and America was celebrating her bicentennial. The national anthem that year was performed by a famous blind entertainer, Tom Sullivan. Let's listen to this rare recording of his pregame performance. <laughs> oh, say can you see? Mr. Sullivan. What? You're not on the microphone. Take three steps forward. Oh, oh okay. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> oh. By the dawn's early <laughs> light. <laughs> oh. <laughs> While organizers were applauded for their support of people with disabilities, Fans and critics alike agreed that a stage 12 feet off the ground was a particularly bad idea. A little help now. This has been Great Moments in NFL History. Hello, this is comedian John Evans, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Thanks for joining us with us in the studio, comedian Billy Gardell, Comedy Central. With a Comedy Central stand-up special, where'd you film that? Uh, New York, uh, the Hudson Theater, which oh, yeah. was really cool. Mm -hmm. it was, uh, you know, uh, two blocks off of Broadway, and uh, I called my dad to try to share a moment with him. Mm -hmm. My dad was a steel worker in Pittsburgh, so I should have known better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, "Dad, I'm two blocks from Broadway." He goes, "Yeah, well, enjoy it. That's probably as close as you're ever going to get." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Dad. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, thanks a lot. For, Love you, too. Uh -huh. His favorite game to play with me when I'm home is look at the TV star taking out my trash. <laughs> That's his favorite little game. He loves to show the neighbors. Yeah. Look, still look takes it to the curb. Uh -huh. Now he can read and types like a secretary. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's, that's what it is. So, Mark, you're a single guy. Yeah, I tell you, though, it's tough because uh, <laughs> I got these neighbors behind uh -huh. me. Really? My neighbor, Gail, very... Um, Gail. Uh, Gail is a woman who just moved. Her bedroom wall is right behind mine, and um, she has a new boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And I found this out. Uh, his name is Tom! <laughs> <laughs> Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. If you want to turn your daddy parts orange, eat some Cheetos and watch some porn. Bob and Tom 24-7. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Hey, we're going to get a song right now out of All Godwin. Right. Squeeze his head till the song comes out. There's Josh Arnold. Chick. There's Ace Cosby. Hey, my man. Buddy. There's <laughs> Willie Griswold. Hey, buddy. I'm Chick McGee. And here's Tom Griswold. Hello, Tom. Uh, Pat. Yes. Good weekend. Yeah, I went up to see my mommy. All right. Up north. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Mother's Day. How'd that go, Yeah, Christy? so all moms had a wonderful Mother's yeah. Day. Yeah. Christy? I had a great Mother's Day. Good. No Beaver one, uh, graduated from college. It was no a really one, uh, nice ceremony. No one disappointed you in any way? Oh, God. Did you go know. see... Uh, I'm just saying. Did you see your mom? Yes. We had a party after in the evening, and everybody came oh, over, and saw wow. my ex-mother-in-law. It was great. Finally got around to seeing me, I guess, late in the day. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> she loved her gift. It was a good day. Well, Very nice. This Can I just say something really quick about this ceremony? This isn't that bad. What? No, this is what Major college, major university, ceremony. yes. And they had, and you know, how the, the big stage, and they have a big screen in the background, and there's just 
a video playing, right, of the lovely fountain that's on campus. Oh. It's on a loop, like 40 seconds, maybe 45-second loop. About 40 seconds into the loop, a guy skateboards by on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Not distracting, let me tell you. <laughs> And it continues through the whole ceremony. Oh, yeah, why not? Every time that the skateboarder came by, we would, like, giggle so much. It was like... So they didn't edit that out? No. How weird. And and this was on a Sunday. We've had... Was was it a loop? We've had commencement on Friday, two, three on Saturday, and I'm on, you know, Sunday morning. They still hadn't edited that out. (laughs) I mean, it would have taken seconds to edit that and put that back on a loop, nobody would know that mm-hmm. you missed. It was so funny. Um, actually, um, the skateboard the guy on the skateboard was a director. He's an Eno Man. <laughs> he Might needs be. to be in all, everything he, he does. Shia Al- 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 his yeah. way in. Yeah. Al- yeah. Alfred Hitchcock. Goes. Had I been producing, I would have had the guy come out live as the show was over and just skateboard across. Oh, the crowd would have gone nuts. Would have yeah. been so cool. It okay. was- Good idea. Uh, well, I'm glad, glad it went well. Yes, now, it did uh, go Pat, well. uh, yeah. you were on the road. Went up to see my mom, uh-huh. brought her some uh, flowers, stopped at the gas station, got her some flowers. Oh, nice. very nice. good. Nice. Yeah. You're that guy. Yeah. Nice. And okay, a, the gas station flower guy. And an energy shot. Nice. Real nice. <laughs> Hail Mary flowers, I call them. <laughs> God. Oh, well, at least you made the effort. <laughs> and I'm a little tender today because I also was hungry and I got something to eat at the gas station. That was, uh, that was not good. How <clears> dare <throat> you? That's my favorite meal. Yeah. Gas, gas station sandwiches. So and, you, and, and you like salad? the random, chicken, random... Chicken salad, tuna salad. Some yeah, those are typically good. Yeah. Clubs. Some, some local lady throws them together and... Yeah. Puts Poor them. boy. They're the best sandwiches you'll ever have. At the Exxon was a display. I was starving. Thought, what the hey? So I ate it. Now I regret it. Gas station sushi. Oh, Oh, the wasabi wasn't hot. Sashimi was gray. I should have thought. Past expiration. Good explanation for puking sushi. I guess it smelled too fishy. Like a tuna trawler. In the sun, soon my insides got squishy. Whoops, excuse me, fellas. I gotta run. Oh. I'm back, my stomach's rumbling, my face is splotchy. Next time I'll buy steak and use a hibachi. But I kept grinning, I wiped my chin and oh. ate more sushi. <laughs> That was my weekend, baby. Yeah. Oh, no. Here, Mama got you Slim Jim. (laughs) (laughs) Some old flowers. Okay, well, thank you very much, Pat. Uh, Now, we uh, return back to the sports page with Mr. Chick McGee. You know, for the first time ever, I kind of sort of celebrated Mother's Day. I put up a picture of my mother and I. I loved it. That was very uh, sweet. Back in the middle 70s. Yeah. The world was young. And I realized that I started the whole grunge fashion. Mm -hmm. I had a flannel shirt. I'll Chuck Taylor's it jeans. It was amazing. Wow. And my mother had the uh, had the hairdo. She had go-go boots on? No, no she, uh, but she had uh, hair that would reach God if he looked down. How about that hairdo? <laughs> oh, it's kind of a bouffant. Uh, that was the style back then. Uh, my Jack, mom did Jackie that. Kennedy in Dallas. Did she wrap her hair in toilet paper when she'd go to bed at night so it wouldn't mess up her? Yeah, but it didn't matter. She usually... F- Fell asleep with with a screwdriver on the pillow, so it really oh. didn't. Oh. You mean the drink, drink or pulp or uh, tool? No, no, no. She was working on a carburetor. She had a Phillips head down there Thanks, just in Tom. case. Thanks. Thanks. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Comedy. Comedy show. Did you like pulp or no? Less pulp is okay. what she likes. Very, very little pulp. That's a great photo. It was hard, it was hard to please her. Did you did you mix her drinks for her? No, money. I did not mix her drinks for her. No. My dad had her try pot one time. She got sick and threw up. So this is nasty. Where's my vodka? <laughs> what do you think of that? I used to mix my father's drinks for him. Did what, you? What did he drink? He would drink uh, gin and tonic. Yeah, depending on the season, I would yeah. guess. Yeah, mm. that's a summer drink. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bourbon and water sometimes, mm. but uh, it, it was no big deal. 
It's much cooler than when Finley makes your Metamucil flaxseed milkshakes in the morning. <laughs> yeah, times have changed. Finley, get in there. Hey, get the, hey, Finn, go grab me the two stool softeners and, oh, and the Metamucil. <laughs> two stool softeners. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're working. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're working hard down there. I assume... Uh, Recently, because of off-the-air incidents, you've you've been uh, have you been exposed to the prescription school stool softeners? No, there's such a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had me on them uh, a couple of months ago. Really? They are <laughs> wonderful oh, in kind boy. of an odd way. Huh. Yeah. Now, are these uh, the kind you swallow or the kind you insert? <laughs> <laughs> It's a fair question. Yeah. It's, a, it's a pill, Tom. It's a oh, pill. Okay. I'm sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> I'm not doing the Thanksgiving turkey position <laughs> and inserting them. No. <laughs> no. No. Now, do you have to have a mirror to do that? No. no I'm sure you, can you, get, know, you have to get down on the ground. You've never given yourself a, a, a fleet, the workhorse of the industry, a fleet enema? I have not. No. No, you can feel uh, with it. And the uh, applicator tip is very soft. It's really amazing. And even if you yeah, had, am I the only one that's done I this? I think you are. Yeah, yeah I've not done. Are. I've not done that. Yeah, but you, done you don't that. need a mirror to wipe. And no. even if you did have a mirror, you need to have a series of mirrors, like at a dance studio or at one of those like hall of mirrors at a fair or something. That's the only place you could go. Yeah, it's uh, just it's a little bot water. Sir, my like children and I were trying to enjoy this fun house. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> how else am I supposed to do it, man? There's nowhere else with two mirrors like this. Well, See, he's been he's been yelling like this for 20 minutes. They closed the. Dance studio by my house this is my only option. I'm well, glad it's I, August because the fair's here at least. And I like it because it makes my butt look really wide. Yeah. It's easier to find that hole. Well, yeah, but then when you've got the tip of the uh, enema bottle, you, you know when it's touching. Sure. And I read that the, uh, the money. Guess, contemporary technology, they've now rounded that off, I guess, back in the day. Was, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's like needles. <laughs> they were square. <laughs> well, uh, I, <clears throat> this is an email. From uh, Eddie. Uh, Eddie's got a great last name, too. Help me, Eddie. His, I'm, I'm going to do it because his last name's so great. Eddie Gravel. Yeah, ah, that is good. Eddie I Gravel. I hope he talks like this. Yeah. Private investigator. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to you guys every chance I get. <laughs> My daughter constantly says, quote, damn, Shaniqua. She also loves Chick for some reason. Well, why not? What the of hell is does. that? I always had her pegged for a Christy Lee girl. Love you all. Thanks for the laughs. <laughs> Eddie Gravel from Essex, Ontario, Canada. All right. Yeah. Eddie Gravel. Thanks for listening, Eddie. You're <laughs> all right. Uh, NBA last night. Jason Tatum had uh, 51, 13 rebounds. And the C's. Beat the 76ers 112-88 to advance to the Eastern Conference Finals for the second straight year. Doc Rivers, for the head coach of the Sixers, loses Game 7 for like the seventh time in a row or some crazy thing. Uh, Tatum's total is the most in Game 7 in NBA history. Steph Curry had 50 a couple weeks ago. Now Tatum with the 51. Uh, Boston had a 33-10 third quarter. The Celtics will face the Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals. They start Wednesday in Boston. Lakers at Denver tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern. Lakers versus the Nugs. And the dad bod god, Nikola Jokic. They have, uh, they have uh, childhood pictures of Nikola, and he looks a little bit like Willie Griswold. Uh -huh. He was, I mean, he's just like, yeah. he's the king of kids in swim shirts at the pool. Yes. He's a little chubby. He's got huge arms. He's got like kind of these little man boobs. It's yep. hilarious. He, really? he, was, he was in his, uh, it looks like his, his family backyard on the back of a tractor. And if you would have told me this guy's going to win the MVP twice <laughs> and in the NBA, you go, no, no way. He's going to be a homeless. And yeah, wow. it's amazing. Cool. It's an amazing And story. once again, Willie, your bet is what? I just have a $40 bet on the Heat that I placed like a month and a half ago, and if they win the finals, it pays out $4,000. So pretty exciting. Wow. Boy, that makes, would be exciting. Makes watching the games a lot more exciting. What would you buy with that money? Um, I don't know. I'd probably just like pay off my credit card bill yeah. and just do kind of responsible stuff. Getting old isn't fun, you guys. I hate yeah, this. I, I want to buy like a boat or something or a <laughs> skateboard. Will you read the room, pal? Is that what you just said? <laughs> you want you want to let it ride? Turn that four thousand into fifty grand, then you get a nice boat. Listen to you. Huh? Yeah. 
That that works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you often wonder how many people sort of have well, you ever let it ride. Have you ever gambled with your father, Willie, in like a place called like Vegas or somewhere like that? No, never. He is. He goes full Beelzebub, full devil, right behind you. Whatever you're doing, it's wrong. You should do the opposite. <laughs> you're not gonna. You're not gonna just walk away, are you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you need to pick that up. You need to let that ride. Let that ride. Meanwhile, he hasn't laid down one dollar. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not a buck. Did you see the picture over the weekend on Insta of uh, Brad Ugh. Garrett playing poker with his little dog in the <laughs> in the little doggy carrier? It was so cute. He's wearing the dog like you do a baby Bjorn, and he's playing poker at the Aria, I think, in Vegas. It was Brad Garrett, though, so the dog was a full-grown German shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> Brad's a tall man, you see. He's a big guy. A quick request here. Uh, I need your help. This comes to us from wow. this guy's name. It's Mr. Couch. Where's yeah, all right. Which, which sounds like one of those stores that's about to go out of business. <laughs> Mr. Couch going out of business. The annual going out of business I, sale. Hi, everybody. I'm Mr. Couch. <laughs> if you're thinking about buying a couch, you think Mr. Couch. We do not have chairs. We no. do not have tables. It's nothing but couches. Just couches. Uh, Mr. Couch has uh, found himself stuck. He's got, uh, what is it called, an earworm? Oh, yeah. And uh, he needs to have his head cleared with a little bit of uh, a Floyd. <laughs> They both make a living in their bare feet. Catching one is like a treat. And they both hang out right there by the shell. They both walk slow with a simple pace. Both afraid to show their face. But only one has a built-in place to hide. Turtles and whores. Turtles and whores. I love them turtles and whores. <laughs> They both advertise a little tail. Move so much you never get mail. They both go by the same nickname, Snapper. Snapper. Daddy never told about the birds and bees, but always talked about both these. It made it clear only one was fit to eat. <laughs> Turtles and hogs. Yeah. Turtles and hogs. I love them turtles and hoes. Turtles and hoes. Now, if you catch one, here's some advice. One is dirty and the other ain't nice. So they polite and always walk up from behind. <laughs> Make small talk, never let them see fear. Don't work alone, just bait or bed. When you're done, just drop them by the river. <laughs> turtles and hoes. Turtles and hoes. I've caught both while fishing. I'm always on a mission. And they both hate the kitchen. Turtles at home. <laughs> Thank you, Floyd. Hope to hear from Floyd again today. A little bit of uh, turtle action. Now, um, uh, coming up in sports, the teaser. Coming up in sports, um, the uh, Colorado Rockies pitcher that got hit in the, a batted ball. He got hit in the head. He is okay Ooh. and out of the hospital. Oh, thank goodness. We'll have yeah. more. Uh, Jason Day is a winner in the PGA. And coming up. That's right. It's brine time. Brine time. Brine time. Brine time, baby. Brine time, baby. Brine time. Brine time. Brine time. The Chambers Brothers. Yes, we'll have an XFL and a USFL update. Oh. Um, Coming up. I can't keep track. Is the USFL back? And the Vegas Golden Knights yes. won in the NHL last night. They advance. Okay. Uh, all very exciting. We have Loch Ness Monster News. Um, right. Josh has a question. No, no, it's, it's good. Oh, okay. good. Yeah, I figured it out. And um, an interesting thing, one of these YouTubers did a little stunt, got caught. <laughs> the feds are involved. Oh, my gosh. We'll find out what that involves uh, right idiots. now. Uh, it's Monday morning. I hope you got a great night's sleep. Mm. I know I did. You know why? Why? I've got a sleep number bed. My bed is beautiful, and it's finally back, and everything is back in shape. I'm in my house now, and uh, I guess if you want to be scientific about it, quality sleep helps improve your mental, emotional, and physical being and your health. Christy Lee, what is your sleep number setting? 45. That's a, That means it's kind of a soft mattress. Yes. So, Chick McGee? 100. I like that firm mattress, Tom. Yeah, but you could, at the touch of a button, change that to whatever firmness level you want. I won't. And each side of the bed has its own settings. Everybody's happy. Adjustable firmness is what made Sleep Number famous, and they've gone way beyond that now with the Sleep Number smart beds that respond to your movements throughout tonight, the night to uh, keep you sleeping 
uh, extra comfortable, let's put it that way. By the way, uh, sleeping too hot or too cold, experts recommend keeping your bedroom temperature 65 to 68 degrees for comfortable sleep. And Sleep Number has temperature-adjusting beds to help you sleep just right. Get the details at the Sleep Number store. We call it sleeping at the next level. Unlock your special potential with a smart bed that can perform as well as you do. And right now, a staggering savings, 50% off the Sleep Number Limited Edition Smart Bed, plus special financing is available for a limited time, subject to credit approval. See the store for the details. To find the Sleep Number store, it's pretty simple, sleepnumber.com slash btshow. That's sleepnumber.com slash btshow. I love my Sleep Number bed. Also coming up in the news, chess news. Ooh. It's really interesting. Uh, and um, we will also discover what are the most popular baby names in the year 2022. The Social Security Administration has just released the list. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Text us at eight. Once again, Bo Burnham is our guest, and he uh, has a uh, little tour going. We'll give you some of those dates in a second. Go ahead, Bo. Every time I go to dinner, seems like I'm getting a little bit thinner. I'll sit down at the breakfast table. I can talk while they're not able. When I look at them, I find there's a single question on their mind. I wish I could go back to the way it was. It's not easy now because... Yeah. My whole family thinks I'm gay. I guess it's always been that way. Or well, maybe it's because of the way that I walk. Makes them think I like boys. Oh my. <laughs> the goddamn question just won't go away. And I get asked every single day. But the way they ask it is uh, not a disguise. Like, uh, how was your day? Do you like to kiss guys? <laughs> it's the worst, baby. This was my fear. Now their opinions are crystal clear. Because my whole family now is shocked. I'm in the closet and the door is locked. Well, now my glory days are gone. I was John Elway. Now I'm Elton John. Well, my whole family now suspects that watching Spongebob had side effects. I'm not gay, and that's what I said. If I'm gay, hey, God, strike me dead. <laughs> that's, a, that's a joke. <laughs> Just because I'm afraid of the snow where my favorite color is the rainbow. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> this is the worst, baby. This was my fear. Now their opinions are crystal clear yeah because even my boyfriend thinks I'm gay I'm just <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you all probably think I'm gay man this song is counterproductive <laughs> La, 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 la. <laughs> because my whole family thinks I'm gay. I said, what did they know anyway? You gotta look right through the haze. Easy bake oven was just a phase. And my whole family thinks I'm queer. That is all I ever hear. But I've been as straight as a ramp. If you don't count Bible camp. <laughs> Bible camp. I'm not gay, I swear. Kind of. <laughs> Whoa, Burnham. Saturday, when he was attacked, police will continue to search the area beaches for remains. It's the first fatal shark attack in Australia since two occurred back in February. And a university professor has broken the record for the longest time living underwater without depressurization. He did it this weekend at a Florida Keys Lodge for scuba divers. University of South Florida professor Joseph Tuturi spent his 74th day underwater Saturday in a Key Largo Lodge for scuba divers. He submerged March 1st and doesn't plan to resurface until June 9th when his mission reaches 100 days. He spent the record-breaking day at the bottom of a 30-foot deep lagoon in Key Largo, much like he had with the previous days, eating eggs and salmon, prepared with a microwave, and exercising with resistance bands and doing daily push-ups. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way.
Hey, hi, this is Tom. And this is Chick from the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, Christy, what's the best way to get full access to the show? Hey, what? you introduced me. Uh, that would be to become a Bob and Tom VIP. Very good. Now, Josh, what's a feature of Bob and Tom VIP? Wait a minute. Well, the live five-camera video stream of the show, plus a podcast of the show, and comedy from the Bob and Tom archives. Excellent. Chick, what do you have to say for yourself? Become a Bob and Tom VIP now. Just go to bobandtom.com slash VIP. VIP. See, that was worth the wait, wasn't it? Hey, it's Roy Wood Jr. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Now in theaters from Bob and Tom Pictures. Hey, Christy, it's Rob. It's been a while. I was just thinking maybe we should give it another try. Call me later. Christy, Christy, pick up. Uh, hey, how you doing, girl? It's me. I'm back in town. Man, the West Coast sucked. Oh, come on. Give me a call. Hi, Christy. Hey, it's, it's me. Remember me? Um, hey, I was looking at some old pictures of, you know, that time back in, back in Tuscaloosa. When, well, you know, I'm sure you remember. I'll, uh, I'll call me. From Bob and Tom Pictures, Christy Lee stars in The X. Man. <laughs> hey, Christy, it's your favorite drummer. I'm in town playing for a new band called Saber. Call me. <laughs> hey, Christy, it's me, Donnie, uh, the biker. Hey, I was uh, cleaning out the boat, and I found a pair of your... Uh... Anyways, I think they're yours. Uh, can we try it again? Uh, I got the motor fixed. I swear to God it works better. You ain't gonna have to row or nothing this time. Call my pager. Christy Lee's X-Men now showing uh, every other weekend and Wednesdays if she's not too busy. <laughs> Bob and Tom, 24-7. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just ruined it. <laughs> I babysat a cat a couple weeks ago. No, it went in the show. Oh, he... Then he started uh, picking his out of his litter box and dropping him in the middle of the living room floor. <laughs> oh, this is a protest. <laughs> It did seem like some sort of action. Cats oh, are, that's funny. you know, jerks, basically. <laughs> Candy. Cats are jerks. <laughs> Today's Cliff Notes Theater, the monumental epic movie, Titanic. Oh. <laughs> Man, this is some boat. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> this has been Cliff Notes Theater. Uh -oh. Cliff Notes Theater. Uh -oh. When you just don't have time to set through the whole movie. <laughs> this is Bob and Tom 24 7. 24 7. 24 Info on that coming up. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Well, hello. There's Pat Godwin with a guitar pick in his mouth. Hello, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Chick. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. Hey, man. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Get some more music out of you coming up, Pat. Uh, we also have uh, coming up the Smugglers in the News. The smugglers Blues. And, um... A, a YouTube stunt that is going to get a guy in serious trouble. And, of course, we have uh, pickleball news, I understand. I'm yes, sure. we do. Uh, but first, Colorado pitcher Ryan Feltner has a skull fracture and concussion after getting hit by a line drive off the bat of Philadelphia's Nick Castellanos. Feltner injured Saturday night, discharged from Swedish Medical Center in Denver yesterday morning. He'll not need surgery. Feltner was put on the 15-day injured list. At least. Yeah. Wow. yeah. When asked whether the 26-year-old right-hander will be out for days, weeks, or months, uh, the manager said probably on the longer end of that. Man, oh, man. Yeah. Wow. He was not made available for interviews. It's frightening. And I, we were talking about this uh, backstage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how that doesn't happen almost every pitch. Because you're right there. And the batter's right there. Yeah. <laughs> Whack! <laughs> Yikes. 
But luckily, I'm, I'm probably so nimble that I would uh, be able to catch the ball and, and flip it to first. <laughs> Absolutely, man. One, two, three. The key is to have your glove raised before the batter even makes contact. Yeah. <laughs> you, you throw the ball and then immediately hit the ground in fetal position. Yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> I feel like that's what I do, too. They, I'd make Mark the Bird Fidrich look like a walk in the park. <laughs> oh, it's Chick the Mole McGee. He comes down to the ground as soon as he... I think Man. the way you fix this is you just give the pitcher kind of the thing that the coach uses to protect themselves when they're doing batting practice, that big net in front of them. Uh -huh. And it could take away from the integrity of the game, could make it less fun. But if they hit it, everybody gets a free taco. How fun is that? Oh, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> hit the protective screen, free, free tacos. tacos. No one gets hurt. Everyone gets guac. Love it. Uh, NASCAR yesterday, Darlington, William Byron. They call him the Lord. <laughs> avoided the wreck between Ross Chastain and Kyle Larson on a restart six laps from the end, and the Lord held on to win the Goodyear 400 in overtime yesterday in South Carolina, Tom. How about that? Lord, didn't you go to Lord Byron uh, Middle School? or I did. Or Shelley Middle School? Yes. Or what was it? Uh, Byron Junior High School. I mean, yeah. Named after Lord Byron, of course, pansexual. <laughs> I went to Lord Corette High School. Uh, yeah. Did you know? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. That's yeah. Inside. <laughs> wow. Is... is he the one that uh, acted like he came up with edu education? Isn't that, isn't that Lord Corrette? Anyway, three out of the uh, final four are set in the Stanley Cup playoffs. You've got the Panthers advancing to meet the Canes. And the Vegas Golden Knights advanced yesterday to face the winner of the Kraken and the Stars. Their game seven is... Tonight, so the NHL getting down to the nitty and well, if the Kraken nitty. wins, I think we're going to have to hear from Mr. Tim Tim Kavanaugh. I think, I think <laughs> yeah. we're going to have to. I don't know why not. Oh, and I forgot to do my NHL update music. <laughs> That's so they're skating. Nobody's upset. <laughs> like this, it's an all skate. Uh, dear, <laughs> good morning, freaks, and Christy. <laughs> Uh, I listen to you guys all the time while Ubering in my the amazing city of Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, the I other, love that. The other day, my family and I were coming back from a day at the beach. We decided to vacuum some of the sand out of the car so it would be ready for my next Uber trip. Mm -hmm. While vacuuming out the back, my mind went blank, and I asked my wife if she would like for me to suck off some of the items that were in the back. <laughs> Uh, your son's back there. Oh. She looked at me. She looked at me as only a wife could uh, do and said, really? <laughs> I think you mean vacuum. Yeah, I'm sure. And he said, thanks a lot, Tom. Mm. That's fine. Just trying to find the description for the word. Sometimes you did. The word just doesn't come. You know, in yeah. England, uh, one of their popular saying, you don't run the vacuum, you, you hoover. You hoover it. You hoover it. Mm. Sure. It's yeah. like we do Kleenex. Right. They hoover. You got, you got the hoover? Sure. Yeah. You're going outside. It's wet. Get your wellies. So the Wellingtons. Mm. Mm -hmm. And. Did you ever get hoovered on the first day? <laughs> You marry her. I got hoovered from the first day. I'm trying to think of the first. It turns out it was just a man dressed as a woman. Oh. <laughs> trying to think that's of the not first the kind time. of hoovered you want. Yeah, well, that's that's, a, that's the famous song. I think Lola. I uh, I think I enjoyed uh, the whole uh, meal before I actually got hoovered. Really? Yeah. Did you get hoovered first or? The whole, the whole deal. I was asking you. Um, How about yeah. your son, Willie? Have you... <laughs> I don't say my generation. We say I got Dysoned. So it's, ah. just a, it's kind of a different thing. <laughs> okay. How does that? Uh, I don't even know how that sucks. Holy hell! The Dyson? It's amazing. Uh, yeah. I had one. Uh oh, here set. we go. You and the Roomba people and the Dyson people are going to go. You around. know me and my vacuums like an old school 1950s janitor vacuum. Is it like a big Kirby, like with oh, the big? Dude. Oh, I like yeah. those the middle with the metal housing. Yeah, exactly. It's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's really it's steam powered. <laughs> it's powered by a river in the backyard. <laughs> you get a you get you up to a throw rug and you try to get it over the lip and it just sucks the whole throw uh, rug yeah. in. Oh. Great. This yeah. goes. This comes into your language. I got to go get an oil change on your car. No, the vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of scares dogs. <laughs> That's a vacuum for you. Mm -hmm. Well, um, <clears throat> uh, sports coming up, including another pickleball update, Tom. That's right. It's brine time. All right. And um, uh, art imitates life coming up from Maine. And uh, where's uh, South Philly? 
Oh, yeah. You like South Philly? Love uh, it. Love it. Oh. Great restaurants. All right. Yeah. We've got, oh, yeah. we got food coming up in South and Philly. And there's somebody trying to set a record for being underwater. I don't know if he's breathing or not. <laughs> oh, well, if he's not breathing, that's going to well, be a short record. I'm telling you, he's not pressurized. I know and that. And then, Pat, you were telling me you have a song. Um, uh, this is We had the story about goats. Yeah. And I don't know. This story made the national newswire over the weekend again. The p police in Oklahoma thought it was a human being crying for help. Oh, and yeah, the goat screaming. It turned out it was a goat. I, I guess the, the sound of a goat, it's, it sounded like a kid screaming. I don't know. So they went on a search, and they, they came up with this goat. Um, and, uh, uh, Pat, when we come back, it's my understanding you have a goat song? Yeah, there was a goat stuck on a roof. Okay, well, we'll we'll dig the story up about goats on the roof. We've got uh, raccoons on the loose. We've got also how many farts to fill a balloon. Christy, I'll let you do some calculations during the break. <laughs> One, and, two, hurry, hurry. And, and Loch Ness Monster news how coming you, up. What? How would you get the balloon there? Well, you'd have to... You'd have to have a tube of some sort. No, you'd have to fart into a container and then squeeze it into the... <laughs> What? What? Yeah, squeezing in the balloon. You're, you're talking not... to someone who filled three floaties over the weekend. I know what I'm doing here. No, you're not going to be able to create enough air pressure to fill up a, a balloon, balloon with your from butt. Farting. No it'll, way. It'll back right back up into you, I would think. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah. Well, there's some Are scientists. You... Have you ever... Is your contention that you can fill up a balloon with the air pressure coming out of your ass? Is that your contention? Well, I think it would have to be over time. So you'd have to leave it there for a while, I guess. <laughs> Yesterday, the little dog was sitting there, and she farted and jumped up and turned around like, what was that? It was hysterical. <laughs> She's a dog. She doesn't know what's going on. Uh, we'll uh, update all these important <laughs> stories coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Sure, yeah. Well, my name's Batman, but you can call me Bob. And when I see the boy wonder, I just say, Yo, Rob, I used to wear a cape and do the leotard bit. Now I'm wearing a hoodie and the jeans because I don't give a... I guess I can't say that. <laughs> okay. I don't give an underwear drawer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um. <laughs> I used to bust my butt all day fighting crime. Now I'm rocking the Bob and Tom show when I sing my rhymes. And I can uh, turn any crowd into a crazy old mom. Cause I'm Batman. But you can call me Bob. <laughs> well, I'll tell you all the story that once happened to me. Well, me and little Robin, we were just cruising down the street. We are in the Batmobile. And, uh... We had the lights turned low. We had a, a six-pack of bat beer on ice, so we were good to go. And, uh, <laughs> with the radio blasting out our old theme song, Robin kept on passing me that big old bat bong. I took a couple of <laughs> hits, and the next thing I know, there was a, a cop pulling us over to the side of the road. He said, uh, uh, hey, what's your name, boy? You look like a slob. <laughs> I said, I'm Batman, officer, but you can call me Bob. <laughs> well, I turned to little Robin. I said, hey, buddy, it's getting kind of late. I'm going to find a date before I start to hallucinate. So we found this little place. And we went inside, and they carted Robin at the door. They asked about his age. He just lied. <laughs> He's like 13, I think. I'm not really sure how old he is. <laughs> well, I went up to the bar and ordered myself a little... Coke and Jack, and that's when I felt a strong hand on the back of my back, and I turned around, and I dropped my drink, because there was this girl there in a the mink, and she was about, she was about the most beautiful girl I've ever seen, I think, and I introduced her, Rob, and I said, hey, this little guy's name is Rob, but, <laughs> well, I'm the Batman, baby, but you can call me Bob. <laughs> well, I promised to behave, and we went back to the bat cave, and she took one look at my place, and well, she started to rave, and then she gave me a nice kiss, and she said, I'll be right back. I'm just going to slip by some of these clothes for a minute so we can relax. Uh -huh. So she left the room for a minute, and uh, 
Well, I threw in some tunes, I opened up my new multi-million dollar skylight so we could look at the moon. But when she came back in, well, she had this big old whip in her hand. Turns out she's a crazy, psychotic cat woman. She started chasing me around my house and she was screaming that she wanted me dead. Had to whip out my batarang. <laughs> hit her right in the hand. She went out like a light. I said, oh man, what a night. Had to drag her down to the police department where they locked her up tight. And as I was leaving, the sergeant looked at me and he said, hey son, you've done a fine job. I said, I know. I'm Batman. But you can call me Bob. Yes. Fantastic. Wow. That was fantastic. That was great, man. Thanks. Bob Schneider is our guest. on Rhine, Germany. <laughs> After several complaints about unsanitary conditions from competitors in a sledding event, it was determined that some of the participants were unaware of the precise nature of a particular event. Once the officials removed all the phlegm balls from the course and explained that the name of the event was pronounced Luge and not Loogie. <laughs> the competition continued without any further problems. Ironically, the eventual winner of the Luge event was an Austrian named Karl Boogermeister. <laughs> he took the gold medal by a narrow margin mm. over Norwegian athlete. <laughs> Who was disqualified? <laughs> this has been another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. Hi, everybody. This is Mark Sweeney, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. A thought from Paul Gilmartin. Down the elevator shaft they plunged, hurtling towards their death, their faces <laughs> drawn by Edvard Munch. They smelled the devil's breath. <laughs> Your tongue, she said at number three. Let me see its size. He grinned and licked his forehead. She buckled at the thighs. <laughs> the impact satisfied them both. Police were left some clues. A smiling woman all alone in a stranger's pair of shoes. <laughs> Michael Bigley is our guest. Uh -huh. he, he took me to see a urologist. Now, I didn't know at the time. I was very naive. I didn't know what urologists do, you know, with the prostate exams and all that kind of stuff. Chick, you know that. Oh, prostate exams. They get right up in there and look around. And how, many, how many you got scheduled for today? <laughs> Before lunch? <laughs> Just two. So, so the doctor, and it's a friend of my dad's, which makes it even, even worse. worse. Sure. I had golfed with this guy. Mm -hmm. And he says, put, put your hands on the table. Oh. And I was like, all right, I can put my hands on the table. And then he stuck his finger. <laughs> yeah, we uh -huh. and, and I didn't know it was going to happen. And I shouted. I go, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and he got, he got mad at me. He was like, cut the theatrics. <laughs> I felt so bad. I was like, sorry about the theatrics. I don't know. Like, as though I had intended it. Like, yeah. this will be my big moment. <laughs> when he sticks his finger yeah. up my ass, I'll prove I should be the star of our town. <laughs> Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. It is my body. And the disciples said, Jesus, we're all on low-carb diet. <laughs> we appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. Right? <laughs> we want to look good in the painting. <laughs> You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. You're <laughs> so weird. You have no idea. Essential Morning Radio. <laughs> this is Bob and Tom. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom <laughs> Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. <laughs> There's uh, Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello, chick. There's uh, Josh Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. <laughs> I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Wee, 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 wee. 
That's like baby. Well, you know something? <laughs> Scanning can be really dangerous. It, yeah, yes, you're particularly dangerous with a little thing called the FCC scan. <laughs> <laughs> you start with an F. <laughs> Never mind, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, now, Pat, we were talking about this uh, story. That uh, for some reason this was on the national news over the weekend. We kind of did it uh, Friday. I thought it was sort of silly, but police in Oklahoma thought there was a kid, and, and not to use a bad pun, thought there was a, a human being trapped in the woods. They heard this screaming, and after uh, sending out a search party, apparently it was a distressed goat. We have the audio of that. Uh, we do. Oh, oh no, we don't. You'd you'd think maybe we would have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Help! Help make, me! Make, make it a little more interesting. Uh, Help me! What's going to make it more interesting is uh, <laughs> turning from Oklahoma. You know, I wonder what uh, Utah. what that would sound like. Yeah. Yeah, I know. We'll have to. We'll just have to wonder. <sighs> <laughs> have you heard the foxes laughing? Those are hilarious. They sound like little little kids. Do foxes, they? Little, you tickle foxes on the belly, they'll laugh. Oh, I wonder what that sounds like. And then they. Oh uh, my gosh. And they bite you. This Stop called, tickling foxes. We sort of on pedal their... in. Uh, Momentum, Audio. momentum killer, really. <laughs> uh, here's the other story. Animal control officers in Davis County, Utah, removed a group of goats from a home, homeowner's roof. See, now you got me stippling up. And <laughs> Is this the goat? Is oh, that a these fox? Are, these are foxes. Oh. So we still don't and have now, a... ladies and gentlemen, please, give it up for Are you ready for your headliner? Yeah. <laughs> it's Josh Arnold. Oh, so, yeah. So I says to the guy, hey, yeah, I ordered yeah. the lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this guy knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, this guy over here knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> You're my favorite Italian food-based comedian, John. Anybody here from a forest? Not around here. <laughs> Coming up, we have cannoli in the news. In a big way. Oh, oh how is that not a knock knock joke? Knock knock. Who's, Who's there? there? Cannoli. Cannoli who? I don't know. Can only be me at your door. Hey! Oh, there it is. Your favorite <laughs> wow. Italian food based comedian, Josh Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Cannoli. Hey, it's me, Josh Imanja. <laughs> I was trying to listen to the audio on the Facebook page of the police department in Oklahoma, but I couldn't. I could hear him say that's a person, but I couldn't hear. I know. What a goes. bummer that we don't have it. <laughs> again, again, we are segueing away from that story. <laughs> Forget I ever mentioned that hey story. Guys. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we had the story last week. Yeah. And I checked out the audio. Yeah. And it was awful. <laughs> yeah, you can't hear it. Oh. Yeah, what I what I did was I skipped it, and you guys were done with it last week. Yep. So that's why we don't have it today. <laughs> Got it. But uh, Josh, if you want to, we can talk about it some more. <laughs> <laughs> long show. We can bore it a long show. Yeah. A little bit longer. Um, how long it? How long a show is it? Long enough. <laughs> oh, they love it. Oh, hey, they love it over there at the Fox Tit thing. The Fox Tit, really. He said, <laughs> I think he said Tit. He said Tit. Fox, said, 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 the fox <laughs> Pit. I didn't <laughs> say a Fox Tit. The Fox Tit is a bird in northern Colorado. It certainly <laughs> is, Josh. <laughs> so scatting's not the we only thing the, you struggle with. We have the sound of a singing Fox Tit. <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy now, Josh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is not yet. No, I <laughs> You know, when things get slow, I'm just going to have the foxes laugh. <laughs> okay, you can stop playing that. It is awful. Oh, my How God. How can say that? It's foxes laugh. Anyway, there's a goat on some roofs. Well, I'm not sure if I'm going to tell you. Pat, this better be good. This is on you. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, Pat goes, Pat that walks in. uncomfortable moment, here's Pat to make a Pat looks like, I've got this great song about I didn't goats on the roof. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> this, well, this, it better not be goats on the roof. Roof. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> no, it can't be. Roof. There's no other roof. I song. find a place where I go. And that's that song. Go ahead, sing okay, it. Could, I, could I at least read the story? <laughs> you don't need to. It, it comes to us from KSL. You got anything? Kessel. <laughs> at this point, no. I'm just waiting for the fist fight to break out when the commercials play. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. When the commercials play. Dean's yeah. going to be uh, Dean's going to clear the room. <laughs> the property had been rented out, and apparently the goats somehow got on the homeowner's roof, yeah, and someone had been thing. asked to come get them, and they didn't, so they had to call the cops and round up these goats all over this guy's roof. Um, that's all I got for you, Pat. Good luck. <laughs> When this old barn starts getting me down And the farm hands are just too much 
for me to face. <laughs> Holy hell, it is the that song. Yeah. I'll climb way up to the top of the house and not become an item at the marketplace. Oh, on the roof, it's peaceful. I can bleat. <laughs> And they can't take my milk and make go cheese. Oh, room, let me tell you when the day is done and my nipples are sore. I'll go up there where mutton bothers me. <laughs> oh, totally worth it. <laughs> I need, I need that. That Keep that handy. I'll get far away from those smelly old pigs who haven't figured out their bacon uh -huh. and it's a tasty treat. Yeah, oh, on the roof, I don't have to chew the weeds. <laughs> Or stand there while Farmer John takes care of his knees. Oh, no. Holy hell. He's cranking it off. John. Apparently. <laughs> Goat on the roof. Fox laugh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sounds like when Snoopy laughs. Or cries, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Next time you do it, make it, uh, you type in Farmer Josh. Farmer Josh? Yeah, we, this is the, the masturbatory king. Okay. Masturbatory <laughs> king. 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 Josh, right next to the rural king. I know that you have visions and dreams of becoming a mountain man. Does any part of you want to be a farmer? Just take yourself back to the land. Yeah, uh, yeah, I like I like that aspect. Sure, cool. mm -hmm. you're kidding. Me. Like, yeah, I was in, I had my hand, I was in elbow deep in dirt all day yesterday. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't know dirt was back in town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she is, man. She is oh. all dirty. Got some flowers. Like a dirty girl. Mm -hmm. Elbow deep. Mr. Pister. Oh. Mr. Pister. That was my fault. Uh. <laughs> I love everything about the farm except the work. If I could just sit on the porch. Yeah, that's, the, that's the thing. That, that's lemonade. also the thing. I don't think I'd be yeah. a, a particularly uh, yeah. good well, farmer. Well, you have a farm here. Well, no, you can, uh, you can have a farm and not work the land. You can just have the farm. Why yeah, not? Sure, you can have the sure. land. You can. Sit My there. farm, I'll, I'll do what I want. You know really. what you could do? You rent your land to a farmer, and then they pay you. And then I can unreasonably lord over them. Yes. I like the sound of that. <laughs> Don't farmers deal I think with I'm enough. Gonna have, I think I'm going to have the, uh, the farm bureaucracy. Yeah, I've rented the ground uh, to dance every day at noon. <laughs> Just Good luck quick. with all these ideas. Come on, do, give, us a, give us a couple steps <laughs> there, Spider. By the way, you think I'm already anti-government. If I become a farmer, that's going to go up even more. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, bureaucracy. Now, uh, we have, um, we have uh, a letter. Uh, okay, what does it say? Uh, <laughs> dear Chick, we were coming home from Dublin, Ohio last night and decided to go through your hometown of Bell Fountain, Ohio. Okay. Hang with me. What a beautiful city. The renovations downtown are incredible. We stopped and got some amazing ice cream at City Suites and Creamery. By the way, awesome pastries there as well. A great staff there in Bell Fountain. <laughs> we sat outside and enjoyed the beautiful downtown area. Two things came to mind. Why is there not a big sign at the edge of town of Bell Fountain stating home of Chick McGee, mm -hmm. national radio personality? Also, when are you going to do a remote there? Have a good day. That's Randy. Well, Randy, I'm not from Bell Fountain, Ohio. <laughs> I'm, from, uh, I'm from London, Ohio. Bell Fountain was in our football league, the Bell Fountain Chieftains. Ah. I'm, I'm aware of Bell Fountain, and I think <laughs> Betty White is from Bell Fountain. Oh, really? Don't they spell it with an E at the end? It's uh, spelled Bell Fontaine. Ah, but, very French. But you pronounce it Bell Fountain. Absolutely. Okay. That made me hungry, if nothing else. That sounds like a delicious place yes, to stop. Yes, isn't that interesting? Do you have any ice cream over the weekend? Look, it was a great ice cream weekend. I did not have ice cream over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I found a great ice cream oh, place. Oh, a cupcake. I think that was delicious. Oh, oh that is delicious. There you go. What kind you of... guys turned me on to the ice cream. It's a red, red cake. What do they call it? Red that? velvet? Red velvet. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's my new favorite. Even, even the new words he has. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where are you on Chipotle? Do you have any ideas on that? The restaurant, I love it. No, 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 no. The 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 word Chipotle. It oh. came out of nowhere, so I'm I'm sure you. Oh, you know the spicy chicken thing. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I go to that food place all the time. The restaurant Chipotle. Yeah, the restaurant yeah. Chipotle. So do I. Love it. But it's also a spice. Isn't it a pepper? <laughs> I think so. Like the word yeah, like it's... like the word Uber meant something before it meant mm -hmm. right the car Uber, sharing service. Uber. Um, what's German for man? Uber Frau. No, the hair. Right. Uber hair was Superman before. <laughs> hey, um, 
How do you, Alex Pillow won the uh, yeah. Grand Prix on Saturday mm -hmm. in uh, Indianapolis, a precursor to the uh, 500. And Doyle Brunson died yesterday. You're no saying, kidding. Hey, I know that name. That's Who's right. Doyle Brunson. Doyle Brunson, 89. He was one of the most influential poker players it, it, of all it, time. It, uh, maybe more than one. Uh, his poker book, the the big, the main yeah. one, is just awesome. Two-time world champ. Brunson called the Godfather of Poker, also known as Texas Dolly. <laughs> he won 10 World Series. Don't ask about that. He won 10 World Series of poker tournaments, second only to Phil Hellmuth, 16. He also captured world championships in 76 and 77. Does yeah. Texas Hold'em named because of him? No. Oh. No. Texas <laughs> Hold'em. Doyle Brunson. You know what he suggests if you're what? interested in playing poker stuff? Oh, here you to go. To play poker by yourself at home. So you just deal out, like, different hands. Uh -huh. And, you, like, you play each hand yourself and you learn. And wow. when you can bluff yourself in the mirror. I did that for, like, a couple nights while reading that book. And I went, well, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not going to... Not just because I saw... Because you, you, you you, you've seen everybody else's hand. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not going all in on, on this right. pair of deuces. Well, I went, I'm not moving to Vegas. And, <laughs> like, I, I, but it was like I read it after I saw Rounders, and I was in this, like, real poker mood. Sure. And, and I went, this isn't me. <laughs> I'm not As poker much as guy. I love it for me, to be me, I'm not doing it. <laughs> for me, you're also learning about, like, characters and improv at the same time. So each hand you have a different character for, and you put a little hat on for one, and you have oh, sunglasses no. for another oh. guy. <laughs> hey, by the way, Way, to go back to uh, Pat Godwin's amazing song about the goats. <laughs> Wasn't that good? Goats Great. on the roof. Yes. There's a restaurant in Wisconsin where goats live and graze on the roof. It's huh. Al Johnson's Swedish restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Do they serve goat? Al Johnson's. I, I hope not. Uh, well, I, if one falls off. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got our tomorrow's special. It looks like we're having goat tacos tomorrow. Uh, it's it's, it's, it's <laughs> cut taco Tuesday. No. <laughs> it's broken neck of goat. <laughs> oh, no. The boxes can't get enough. Yet. <laughs> All right. Oh, broken. Okay. okay. Uh, coming up, we have... Uh, Pickleball update coming up. Yeah, we have how many farts to fill a balloon. We have a definitive... And answer. finally, we it's got impossible. that goat sound effect. <laughs> You can all stop Pat, wondering. I enjoyed the song, Pat, particularly the use of the word mutton. That was the best part, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was the best yeah, part of the goat. Was. Isn't mutton lamb? Yes. It doesn't matter. Okay. No, no. <laughs> lamb, goat, what's the hell? I thought it? lambs are just girl goats. Is that wrong? Uh, no. no I, I think you're right. <laughs> lambs yeah, yeah. are sheep, right? Yes, lambs uh, are sheep. This is why we're not farmers. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait a second. Is that a horse or a duck? Lambs are baby sheep. No, okay. lamb and goats can have babies. No, they can't. <laughs> yes, they can. They're called loats. They are. You've never been to the loat farm? Yeah. You got your loats. You got your ligers. Oh. Oh, my Lord. Nature's sick. <laughs> crazy. Nature's a filthy landscape. <laughs> you don't want any part of it, Christy. Yeah, I do. I want. I would love it. Are you on a load? <laughs> I would have a load, a bloat. I don't care. <laughs> Go. What was, what was the headline for the the poker guy that died? Doyle Brunson passed passed away. The they do something clever like he folded. <laughs> 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 he folded for the last. Help. Yeah. <laughs> last flop for Doyle Brunson. Oh. Well, He's not bluffing. We're still uh, we're still waiting could, for Doyle to be, call. He could uh. be bluffing. I'm sorry. Uh, well, what did I just say? Oh, coming up, the most common baby names uh, in 2022 in the USA. We're in hmm. trouble for the uh, sound effect, and now we're in trouble for going long. Good, okay. Good job, sorry. Tom. Uh, right now, the Bob and Tom Show is brought to you by Better Help. It's so easy to get caught up what everybody else needs from you. Do this for me. Do this for me. Uh, and uh, never take a moment for yourself. You gotta, uh, you gotta uh, fix yourself. Make sure that you're okay. And there's nothing wrong with uh, getting a little bit of help in these confusing times, the post-COVID world, whatever you want to call it. I think we all feel like we have PTSD sometimes. Therapy can be a great tool, and better help has connected millions of people with licensed therapists. What's interesting about BetterHelp is it's all done online. Not just the connection, but the therapy itself. 
Perhaps you should give BetterHelp a try. It's, like I said, entirely online, designed to be extra convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You'll fill out a brief questionnaire. You'll get matched with a licensed therapist. And by the way, you can switch therapists at any time for no additional fee. So for more balance in your life, consider BetterHelp. Get all the details at betterhelp.com slash btshow. And by the way, they'll knock 10% off your month if you do that today. That's betterhelp.com slash btshow. BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com slash B-T show. Uh, coming up, we got our pickleball update. We got the Loch Ness Monster and something called the Everything Shower. And Al Johnson's Swedish restaurant with goats living on the roof. All right, and Greg Warren and Bert Kreischer today. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom 24-7. In 1989, Emerson Fittipaldi won the 500. On the last lap, he and Little Al touched wheels on the north turn, and he sent Little Al right in the fence, crashed it. But Emerson Fittipaldi came around and won the 500, his first 500 in 1989. And that was also the year that the winner's share of the purse was over a million dollars, first time. It was like $1,000,000, one or something like that. So that was a big deal. I mean, the Indianapolis 500 has always had the biggest purse of any motorsports event. They were the first to go over a million dollars, and they still to this day have the largest purse of any, bigger than Daytona, bigger than anybody's. So race morning after the 500 every year is the big pictures. The winner and the crew all come back to the speedway at 9 a.m., and they put the car on the straightaway, and they take all the sponsor photos and all these pictures. Well, Ron McQueenie was the chief photographer at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for 40 years. And Ron had the great idea, we need to take a million dollars in cash and place it on Emerson's car. So they get hold of the office, we need a million bucks in cash, all right. So they bring out a million dollars in cash in these bags with, with real money. Yeah, this is the day after the 500. And they had armed guards out there. And so they get the money out of the bags and they're stacking it all over Emerson's car. And they step back and they look and they go, you know, that's really not that impressive. <laughs> go back and get another million. Now where else in the world can you say, on a Monday morning, Memorial Day morning, go go back and get another million. Well, they did. And they take another one and Ron told me, he goes, at one point, I was reaching out to adjust a stack of cash and this guard went, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> like, I didn't like my idea of me touching the dough. So if you ever look at that picture from 1989, you can, you can Google it, Emerson Fittipaldi, 1989, and there's money stacked all over the car. That's actually $2 million in cash stacked all over that, that car. <laughs> I have a bean for lunch. And then a bean for dinner. <laughs> yes, yes it is, yes it is, yes it is. No, no it's not. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. People say I got a bad break. Hey man, what's going on? Yeah, it's just so cool, man. I can't believe it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I love the Bob and Tom show because they represent America, the Constitution of the United States, and I live in Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, so anyway, I was asking, uh, somebody uh, told me uh, that you are a mayor in Hillsborough, Ohio. Uh, that, that's got to be uh, really interesting. Uh, hey, tell me about it. <laughs> hey, Mr. Potter. Hi, building and loan. Oh, uh, gosh, Yogi. I'm all sticky. Hello, this is Droopy Dog. Hello. Hi, uh, welcome to the Mr. Obvious Show. I am your host, Mr. Obvious. Let's take a call. Thank you very much. Thank you.
And the mouse who ran up her leg and frightened her so badly she ran out of her house just before it mysteriously exploded. Oh. Then we'll go to Segmac, Arkansas and meet the <laughs> Cheesemen family. We'll hear their true story. A swarm of Canadian wasps attacked and repelled an armed intruder as the Cheeseman family napped in their home following a baked bean dinner. <laughs> Finally, we'll meet Harriet Billingsley, who, upon discovering a swarm of pubic lice, rushed to the drugstore to get a bottle of Quell shampoo and, on impulse, purchased what turned out to be a million-dollar winning lottery ticket. <laughs> Join host Dick Vermin tonight for Miracle Pest. Miracle Pest, only on Bob and Tom Television. <laughs> You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Yeah! Essential Morning Radio. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 24-7. Nick Griffin's our yeah. guest. I, I'm, I'm glad that it... Uh... I'm glad everything's okay yeah. now. Yeah. Now, are you dating at all? Do you see anyone? Are you? No, I don't. I don't. I mean, I, I try... You know, they're doing that internet dating, which... Uh, have you tried that? I have tried it, yeah. But but it, I just don't... I don't see a future in it because there's no story if you do get married with your kids, you know, I was checking the box score and then I double clicked on your mom's head. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're too high when you're eating cereal naked and your girlfriend tells you to put some clothes on, you realize it's not your girlfriend, it's just a woman on a bus. So that's how you know you're too high. <laughs> they don't say we didn't warn you. Oh my God! There's laughter ahead. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. Pat Godwin at the uh, performance room. Hello. There's uh, Josh Arnold. <laughs> Hi. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. hey, buddy. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning. I'm Chick McGee, and we were playing a game off the air that we can't play on the air, but, man, I wish we could. <laughs> no. What's, nope. What situation? Really television trivia, really. Yeah, is what yeah. Was, what yeah. situation comedy is <laughs> this, you know, Tom describing in one sentence or less? <laughs> Pretty funny. <laughs> man, it was funny. We, he won. We didn't get it. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a hard yeah. one. Totally. Uh, uh, the valid. answer is Frazier. Frazier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's uh, move forward here. And then I have a special request oh, right? for a, a guy exiting the military after a big career, and he wants her some special, so we're going to get that on. All right. But first, Very good. Oh, but first? Yeah, a little bit of sports. All right. Yeah, I got something over here. Here we go. That's right. It's brine time. Brine time. Brine time, baby. Brian time. Brian time. Brian time. time. You will remember where you were when you heard me tell you Pickleball is replacing Bed Bath & Beyond and Old Navy stores at various malls across the country. Oh, yeah. yeah. Malls Pickleball are, court in the former Bed Bath & Beyond just a few miles from here. The malls are turning to a wider range of tenants and activities, including virtual golf, breweries, and pickleball. Hmm. A group called... Pickleball America is taking over an 80,000 square foot anchor space in Stamford, Connecticut. That was once a two Connecticut. Connecticut. <laughs> Stamford, <laughs> which was once a two story Saks Fifth Avenue. <gasps> what? Their Saks had two stories? Are you kidding me? Oh, it was a heck of a place. You should have seen it. A, a mecca of. <laughs> ours I mean, has three. I've mm -hmm. heard it. This, ours, does it? Well, yeah, yeah, but they were nothing like these two stories. <laughs> yeah, so it'll be it'll make room for more courts. Yeah, <laughs> you've been in there lately. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you can them right there. They're using it for cannonball practice. <laughs> I know Von Mar has two stories every now and then, but a pickleball facility recently opened in an old Navy space at a New Hampshire mall, while a former Bed Bath and Beyond at Lake St. Louis. More examples. So with the beyond is <laughs> pickleball. All right. Are you on the? Aren't you on the pickleball thing now? I am about to start. Are you? Good. Oh, we've no. got to get in That'd this league. Cute. Don't I be wanna, nervous. You I, got this. I want to beat your ass at pickleball. <laughs> well, that's fine. I, I haven't started yet. But I'm, Bring it. Are you taking? Are tell you, you're taking at our gym. Tell me you're taking lessons with the foremost pickleball pro <laughs> in the United States. Ludo. <laughs> oh, Ludo's great. Great tennis coach. Ludo. Oh. oh. Hey, one, 
my pickle neighbor. Pickleball for the money. <laughs> All right, Tom, right back, baby, right back, Anna, baby. <laughs> I just hope they have enough handicap spaces <laughs> and all these places to play pickleball. The number of people playing pickleball, pickleball grew by 159% over three years. Arguably, no one was playing before, though. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's uh, the gym that we go to, they've they took over shut the down both basketball that courts. you go to. Put not everyone goes to your gym. <laughs> I was talking to Pat Godwin, someone who's reasonable. Not everything you do and enjoy is something that everything does, everybody else does and enjoys. Good. Do you know that? <laughs> that I way they're in my way. Do. But they transformed that basketball court into pickleball. Yeah, yeah they're all Completely. pickleball And it's packed now. all the time. Packed so. all the time. They have a full-time person that's in charge of pickleball there, because yeah. I ran into her when I was... Now, there this, so there's there. I know that there's a what is it? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Bed Bath and Beyond that has some pickleball courts here, but they're doing it to Old Navy as well. Yes, I didn't realize Old Navy stores were. Uh, yeah, must be select flourishing. malls where they're having problems. Yeah. If, if you're the manager of an Old Navy store, <laughs> it's closing. <laughs> do you have to go d down with the store? <laughs> you have to stay. That's, at the that's store. a fair question. <laughs> I, it, it's actually one of my new favorite questions. <laughs> I, 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 never, I think tradition stays. I, mean, the, the, I never yeah. thought I'd see this day. <laughs> the the seagoing tradition. Lock, lock the doors. I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go, fellers. Well, what have I done? I accidentally. <laughs> you turn. You go to turn off the music, and you hear some guy's voice. It's been an honor to play with you. <laughs> <laughs> nice Titanic reference. Thank you very this much. This is a Tom. This is a Tom story. I know. I not necessarily. I not necessarily endorse this. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> the Queen's Gambit is playing out in real life in Maine. A custodian is coaching his school's chess teams to acclaim. Is that great? Mm. Is that what Aww. happened to the story? Yes. Mm -hmm. David Bishop. Is that right? No. <laughs> So night four, <laughs> a part-time chess coach. Okay, so this is a custodian who's a part-time chess coach. Sounds to me like he might be a part-time custodian. Yes. And we could easily say chess coach. Chess coach. <laughs> you thought he was just a custodian. But the guy exclusive. had a serious uh, high-tech job of some sort and decided he wanted a little bit less stress became a custodian happens to be a fine chess player it's a good story it's fun so he's teaching the kiddos teaching kids to play chess and he saw some of the kids he was saying can beat him and at first he was kind of Thank embarrassed you. and he realized hey this is great real dumb mm, okay well, david bishop story. led his elementary and middle school teams to state championship titles this year bishop's middle school team came in eighth place huh at the national championships in Texas. Oh, nationals. Okay, yeah, sure. That's great. Yeah, it's wonderful. The elementary school team will soon be competing in the national championships in Maryland. Hopefully, they'll come in eighth or ninth place. <laughs> wow. Can't even give it a nice positive spin. It's like Goodwill Hunting. Remember? The Goodwill sure. Hunting. This the no. janitor. And How do you like them apples? No. No. It's you, you saw hunting. the Queen's Gambit, right? No. Yeah, the no. janitor. Did it? No, the alien girls in that. Oh, you don't like her? No, is it her Anya, eyes are way up Taylor against her Taylor Joy oh, yeah. from the it's menu. It's a really yeah. great She's show. She's a terrific She's actress. Her and Anna Kendrick and Anne Hathaway can all be in a van. <laughs> oh, dude, I would pay them so much just to pull into your driveway. <laughs> Bishop became a custodian after retiring from his job in the telecommunications industry, taking on custodial work, figuring it would mean less stress for him. It's a fun story. <laughs> And if, and if the kids get nervous before the match and puke, he's got that special oh, that janitorial sawdust, sawdust stuff that, that they use. Oh, okay, now you're talking. <laughs> that stuff is... Ugh. Bishop Did said, they make a home version of that? I don't know, but when I smell it, I want to vomit. Sure, you can pick that stuff up. Really? And it's called like vomiter. Is it? Vomitizer Ugh. or something. It looks like pencil shavings. Mm. Vomitizer? Something like that. Oh, that sounds like something the Pentagon would get a hold of. <laughs> well. Vomitorium. Or... We uh, decided to go with some softer weapons. We just used the vomitizer and all their troops just started puking everywhere. They... When I grew up, it, lo <laughs> it looked like um, kitty litter or, or like uh, aquarium <laughs> bedding. Yeah, like, yeah like pencil shavings. What? Huh? What? what Vomazorb. Vomazorb. 
Sounds like a Star there Trek. There you go. Villain. I am yeah. Vamazor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can we get him off the deck? Oh my Vamazor God. will stay as long as I want. <laughs> Job of the Hud meets Vamazor. <laughs> the biggest challenge we've ever faced, gentlemen. <laughs> oh, uh, thank you. Thank you, God. Hello, Bob and Tom show. Hey, Bob and Tom. It's Donnie Baker. Hey, Donnie. Hey, how Donnie. are you? I'm good. I ain't surprised at all about that custodian being a master chess player. Huh. Man, all custodians are connected. It's weird that way. The one we had in middle school, didn't know till two years in. He invented Montreal steak seasoning. I swear to God. <laughs> Something about it, man, when they put their minds to it. But I'm happy to report my mom, Phyllis, had a really good Mother's Day. Oh, good. Oh, that was nice of you. A fine woman. Well, maybe best ever, you know. Well, most families, we got together, kicked out, watched Scarface. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Either that or steal Magnolias again. Oh. But we had a cookout for about 25 people. I set the whole thing up, oh, ran a 50-50. I put tables under the carport. And she's all happy. We cooked her two favorite things. Um, Danny Moore's hearty beef stew mm -hmm. and a side of Spam and mayonnaise slider. Oh, oh, that sounds delicious. Yeah. And, and for dessert, the next best thing, Robert Redford's. Oh, good. Of course, she went on and on about how considerate we was, you know, stopping to pick up flowers from that roadside memorial. Uh -huh. You know? And maybe it's because she got a little tipsy on smearing off ice. But before dinner, she suggested we all take a turn on the stripper pole. Oh. <laughs> You know what, Josh? She might be on the backside of menopause and stuck on day shift at Xanadu's, but my mom feels she can still navigate a pole. Okay. You know? Yeah. Nice to Our know. neighbors were pissed. We didn't give any heads up or take the flag down first, but oh, no. man, I guess free dessert solves everything. <laughs> I swear to God. Oh, and you know what I found out? What? I ain't bragging, but I'm a natural on the stripper pole, too. Really? <laughs> I guess it's in my blood, Tom. My Uncle Sonny said I should audition for a Chip and Dales. Uh -huh. I said, ain't no way I'm getting up and gyrating in front of a couple squeaky talking Disney cartoon <laughs> characters. That's, that's, that's Chip and Dale, Donnie. Yeah, okay, I better go. <laughs> Liffy's trying to catch one of Mitchell's chickens again. Get the one that keeps yodeling at 4 a.m. <laughs> <Yodeling. laughs> makes more noise than a laughing goat. I gotta go. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Donnie. Huh. Are you familiar with the Robert Redford dessert? Yeah, it's a cake. Isn't it called the next best thing to yeah. Robert Redford? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's really... <laughs> makes old ladies giggle when you say yeah. that. Yeah. Real dumb. Yeah. Okay. That and pickleball okay. keeps them alive. Oh, oh yeah. Stupid world record. The old ticker ticking, right? Yeah. <laughs> A South Philadelphia neighborhood attempted to break the world record for the longest cannoli. NBC Philly reports that multiple rest restaurants... Okay, did they put a bunch of cannoli together? Because if they did, that does not count. <laughs> That's what they did. Oh boy, <laughs> That's not. They one... took them out. Of, they they took them out of the foam boxes. And... Oh, so basically they <laughs> delivered them. <laughs> so we could say we're going to make the world's largest Twinkie. That's right. By taking a bunch of Twinkies and just putting them together, stacking them end to end. Do we just line them up, or this do we... is. Uh, Very silly. What is the name of the, the, the name of this segment? Multiple. What is the name of the segment? Stupid world records. World. world you know what? He's right. When he's right, he's right. Self-fulfilling prophecy, really. <laughs> <laughs> a cannoli measuring 100 feet long to beat the current record of 70 feet, 3.7 inches. I love cannoli. Though. They are great. They are great. Uh, everybody ready to stand by? Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. now, don't everyone jump at once. Okay. okay. You mean <laughs> with our just, just, just calm down. Ready to wrap around his neck. The name of the restaurant is the Rim Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> What if, what if they have any employment openings there? Oh, why? Are you looking <laughs> for a rim job? <laughs> <laughs> I'm See, surprised like at the rim cafe, do they just serve jello shots? What and... is... <laughs> She's just like slow pitch why, now. Why, why doesn't Netflix put that show on? Who came up with r rim job? The I name or the... The name. Oh, the, the name. The and, act itself. The name and the act. Oh, I'm going to the ancient Greeks, I bet. Well... Let's call that the old rim job. Yeah, that's it's just kind of. I think childish. rim. Oh, I, I never go to the rim cafe when I'm in Philly. It's just kind of childish. The name is dumb. I go to my favorite healthy place. It's called Salad Tossers, and that's <laughs> a much healthier option. <laughs> a nice, a nice alternative. Yeah, and they get their mind out of the gutter. Yes, yeah. they do. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. What about the fruit bowl? <laughs> Ever go there? <laughs> well, if you're... <laughs> Look at this. You know, Christy I've never Lee. seen you there. <laughs> Christy Lee with the prison slang. <laughs> I don't think girls are capable of the fruit bowl. No, they, no they're not allowed. they're not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. You ever see a pressed ham? Yes. You know what that is? Yeah, it's when you moon somebody in a car. Have or you ever against you a put it a, yeah. in a window. Have you ever mooned anybody, Christy, naked butt? No. Josh? Yeah. Uh, Tom? Of course. Well, of course. Yeah, you bet. Ace? Yes. Oh. Chick? That, that damn badonka donka. <laughs> <laughs> I have not. Do you? I will I never forget the feeling of mooning somebody out of the middle school bus on the way home from a football game. Just the feeling of your butt against cold glass <laughs> is such a specific feeling, and you never get it anywhere else in life. I would, how, how much, uh, Pat, would it cost for you to sit there while Ace does a pressed ham against that guy? And you have to, like, look. You can't look away. If you look away, you get no money. I turn the salt. I... And I tell you what, I'm in for 20 bucks. <laughs> I have yeah. 10. That's all I got. He'll do it for 20 me. bucks. No, no, you. Me. Yeah. No, you got to pay Ace. You just have to Why? Watch. No, no, I'm going to yeah. I'm going to pay Ace to to flash him. Yeah. No, Pat, Pat, you got you got enough of my money. You just sit there, okay? <laughs> Are you going to you in for 20 bucks for Ace? Sure. <laughs> really? I have 10. That's we're up to 50 bucks. I got no no. I got, no? I got a big ass. I need some big <laughs> big bucks. <laughs> You know what? Hang on. Everything I've ever said about Ace, I take back. When Ace gets his resume out under skills, it says big ass. And, and I'm gonna put a, I'm putting a hundred in right now. Whoa. Oh, okay. Yeah. A bill Price from the just now, up. You're gonna need a ladder. Well, a step stool, just a step yeah. ladder. But what does Pat get for staring at it? Pleasure. <laughs> Uh, probably 10,000 hits on Instagram. <laughs> In fact, we, Pat, you have to sing to it. You have to, you have to play a song. You have to uh, come up with a song for Aces But Don't. Yeah, you have, to, you have to serenade his pressed ham. I could do that. He's going to take the money and do it. You know? I know he will. I hope so. so I'm in for 100. So how long is it going to How long is it going to take you to compose a song uh, in honor? Are, are you gonna? Is the song going to come after you've seen... Would he be willing to do it today? <laughs> well, you, well you, yes. you can write a song before the end of the show. Sure. If, hey, whoa, whoa. Did you, did you shower today and the whole thing? You're all clean? This is the guy that farts holes in his underwear. He's going to crack this. We're going to have to call Safe Flight to come fix the studio. <laughs> Safe Flight Repair. Safe Flight Replace. <laughs> Another world record coming up. Okay. This all sounds illegal. Uh, it sounds like fun. No, it'll be fun. <laughs> okay. All right. The only one getting hurt is... Nobody's going to see Pat it but Pat. Me. And that's fine. Do we have any window cleaner? You know. <laughs> also, Pat, you can't take your glasses off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will be right back with uh, that, that and more. Now, this wait a is, minute. Does he have to look or does he have to stare? Stare. <laughs> sing and stare, stare, right? Stare. Sing and stare. Okay. And Ace, we want you to wink at him if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Do a little, little, little press pucker thing. No, Where are we at? 20 bucks or 40 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. For a complete copy of the Bob and Tom Show contest rules, go to bobandtom.com. Google knows everything. It's yeah. incredible. You yeah. can wake up after a long night of drinking being like, uh, Google, who is this girl in bed with me? <laughs> Google will be like, do you mean who is this guy? Uh, <laughs> don't you mean? <laughs> oh, no, Google, what did I do last uh, night? Do you mean what didn't you do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I like technology is crazy. I like uh, Amazon. It, it, it's I, I'm growing increasingly um, terrified of you know, the robot takeover oh, of yeah. Earth. Uh, yeah. Amazon, yeah. Amazon, knows, Amazon, Amazon knows what you're going to get. Is that what yeah. you're talking about? Yeah. The, uh, hey, yeah. you bought this CD. Yeah, I'll you bet you'd like this yeah. one. Yeah. It's like even in the last Terminator, yeah. uh, the robots couldn't read our minds. You know, if you like Amazon.com, you may also enjoy being enslaved by robots. Yeah. You're right, though. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like having robots. Amazon everywhere. does yeah. suggest I, stuff for you. I like the um, the spammers uh, that use like the very uh, they always use like a a common name like like Steve mm -hmm. oh some, some yeah. generic mm -hmm. subject like been a while and, you know they try to pretend like uh, you know it's someone you know or whatever and I open it up it's like do you want free porn. <laughs>
Like, well, only a dear, dear friend of mine would know how much I enjoy free porn. Uh, Lick. My computer just explodes. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Steve. Uh, you go buy a new one. I email him back. I'm like, dear t- Steve, thanks so much for trying to send me a free porn. Damnedest thing, my computer exploded. Could you please resend? <laughs> Damnedest thing. Our guest in the studio was comedian Shane Moss. I actually, I, I really. I realized how addicted I was to uh, internet porn uh-huh. recently. I, I broke my computer. I didn't have a computer for uh, like four or five weeks. Uh-huh. It was sent in. And I actually, this is one of the most pathetic things I've ever done in my life. I found myself um, one day um, satisfying to my myself to the idea of having a working computer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like thinking about huh. screen sizes and wow. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, you're, uh, you're, yeah, okay. Oh, wow. players of all time and a two-time world champion. Brunson was called the godfather of poker, also known as Texas Dolly. He won 10 World Series of Poker tournaments, second only to Phil Hellmuth's 16. He also captured world championships in 1976 and 1977 and was inducted into the Poker Hall of Fame in 1988. Doyle Brunson again passed away on Sunday at the age of 89. I'm guessing there's a good card game breaking out in heaven today. That's a look at things you may have missed. More of the Bob and Tom show coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. I wanted to call real quick. <laughs> wish all you moms out there the happiest of Mother's Days this weekend. Uh, just because mine took off on us when I was four don't mean you other moms don't deserve a tip of the hat from old Ed Septic. <laughs> I like to say my mom was a lot like a cicada. I'd only see and hear from her once every 17 years. <laughs> when I did finally see her, the only presents she brought me were two cases of Jolt Cola and a carton of Virginia Slim. Oh, nice. But I will say... Uh, that did make me the most popular fifth grader in my class. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, this is comedian Rob Haney, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. If Bobcat called you, wouldn't you keep it and play it for all your friends? Hi, this is Bob Goldthwait, too. Yeah. We've got an X-rated movie coming up. We think you're pretty cool. Just give me. A I had a I had a phone call from Bono that 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 I accidentally erased. Oh, oh no! Bono? Yeah, and I was like, Dah! Oh, why'd I do that? Have you ever heard Bobcat's Bono? I haven't. Oh, I can't do it. But yeah. I bet you can enough no, to make us go. No. Oh my God! No, but so he called and, the, and he heard you doing your Bono, and he called you. Yeah, he was very nice. And then I saw him. I was at uh, Dodger Stadium, or no, I can't remember which stadium it was. It was very, and I and I and he and I, I I met him and and I'm in the you know like the the stadium doorway, mm-hmm. and he said some very sweet things and very kind and we talked back and forth and it was just him and I and, and one other person and he starts walking out to do his concert and he turns around and he takes off those you know the fly sunglasses mm-hmm. and he goes hey Bobcat and he throws them to me <laughs> and I catch him and I go thanks Mean Joe. <laughs> I knew that was coming. And he goes, and he goes, what? what? Yeah. Oh, no. oh man, that's the that's one of my best riffs ever. Oh, yeah. Falling on his deaf Gaelic ears. Yeah. 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 Bob and Tom, twenty four seven. Oh yeah, yeah. So back to your bedroom, Christy. We've decided uh, mm-hmm. you need to remove the crucifix from the room. Okay. I think you should just we go go speak. go all out. Go all out and do what? Well, as soon as you open the door, <laughs> disco ball. Right. Yeah. Condom machine right there on the wall. <laughs> Incense. <laughs> you know, you better tell one of those little uh, machines that dispenses cologne. <laughs> no. No, no, one of them is uh, condoms. The next yeah. is French ticklers. Oh, yeah. Something that looks like a cat toy. Oh, you know. right. And then... <laughs> yeah. 
I think we've done all the damage we can do. Oh, no, no. We and then, oh, I know. Started. And then, uh, then a little the little button, you walk over, uh, press it, and you hear your chick going, are you ready? To- are you ready? <laughs> yeah. And then, the, then the disco music starts. Uh, oh, yeah. Techno action. Uh, 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 oh, Christy. Do it, do it, do it, Actually, do it, do it. it's chicks. I- Jeff Rothband is our guest. Uh, Jeff is a fine, fine comedian. <laughs> I actually um, had to do that once. What? Be a pole bearer. And that, oh, my that's God. That's heavy. Yes, that's a heavy, heavy job. Yeah. I actually had to go to a funeral, and I was asked to be a pall bearer, and I, uh, <laughs> always a pall bearer. <laughs> <laughs> Never the corpse. Never the corpse. <laughs> Bob and Tom. Well, meaning, but. Yeah, they're. they're... It's of August to the rule. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's. Pat Godwin. Hey, Chick. Christy does look like uh, Stripes Fruit fruit Stripe Gum. Oh. Yipes, so. Stripes, Beach Nuts got them. Mm-hmm. Beach nut. Do they still make that? I don't know. There's Josh Arnold. Christy was just teaching me about high fashion. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. It was. Hmm. She's going to buy me a Birkin bag. I am not <laughs> buying you a Birkin bag. <laughs> I'd have to remortgage my house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. Uh, for me, high fashion is when I smoke a blunt and go to the Gap. Real good time. <laughs> oh, oh very I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Yeah, you missed some interesting uh, weed news while you were gone. I may have to dig that up and uh, get your take on that. I think we'll be okay with that, but uh, whatever you say. <laughs> uh, we have uh, coming up apparently a uh, stunt. Apparently, Ace is a uh, semi volunteer. There's no way Ace is going to do this. Pressed ham. This no. Song is written. No way. Oh, yeah, I know, but it's, it's Ace. He, he finds a loophole. Yeah, yeah. he'll say something. Well, I didn't say it was going to be uh, while we we're broadcasting. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I'd take my pants down. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think it, 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 in the interest of the law, probably we should not do this. But uh, what? what? They can't do anything. We're, it... we're in a building. There's <laughs> no okay. camera play this way. Thank the you. That's not... how they get away with making meth. You're in a building. Yeah. yeah. The camera's not going to be on his bare butt. Just sees my face. Of what? And, <laughs> yeah. and, and the look of pleasure on Pat's face. <laughs> Cut to three months later. <laughs> Parody songwriter wins millions in lawsuits. <laughs> oh, no, I, thought you, I thought you were going to say uh, yeah, so, songwriter <laughs> marries Man. fellow broadcast <laughs> engineer. <laughs> Man who mooned him said there was no deal between the two. Yeah. That guy, that's got everything. Now, it, it, interracial, gay. Oh, God. <laughs> it's, it's, it's got it all. You're right. You'll be in a commercial on TV. You know, sometimes <laughs> I just, sometimes I, I think we we miss this, the opportunity to just let him talk. This could be the most progressive thing we do. <laughs> well, we have to do it. Song's Mark written. is written in from Peoria, where it plays. He says, good morning, miscreants. I'm a truck driver traveling south along I-57. I'm currently sitting on an off-ramp, cleaning coffee off my windshield <laughs> after hearing the plan for Ace to put his ass up against Godwin's window yes. whilst he sings to it. Uh, uh, let's make done. this happen. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, Paul yes, Clausen yes. in Jonesville, Virginia, has taken the time and trouble to write, I will gladly mail Ace a bunch of coupons. Oh, oh boy, <laughs> just to the pot. press his country <laughs> ham what? in front of Pat. <laughs> Country ham. This is getting big, Ace. I don't see how you're going to get out of it. I know you will. And I'm also looking forward to the print it will leave on the glass. We haven't even taken that into consideration. We should doctor your butt up there. So, doctor my butt. I've seen the tears. Um, uh, and so it leaves like a print. Yeah. Cocoa that, butter? That would be for oh. skin. <laughs> you ever lotion coke, your ass? Your I'm cocoa not. butter mm. skin. <laughs> <laughs> now the cocoa butt was a famous wrestling move. Oh right? yeah! By um, the uh, '60s, '70s, '80s. Bobo wrestling. Brazil. Yes, Mr. Bobo Brazil. Man, that guy. <laughs> Mr. Bobo. <laughs> Mr. Bobo Brazil. You had to respect the man. I met him. I don't, because he took a sandwich from Christie. Yeah, he did. My Monte Cristo, half of my Monte Cristo. It's my favorite. Did sandwich. you? Are you sure that there were enough there? Did you count? <laughs> What? Uh, the Monte Cristo. Did you count the Monte Cristo? Oh. <laughs> you know, that's Sorry. my favorite book. I love The Count that of book. Monte Cristo? Yeah, I've read it at least what's three the, times. Uh, what's the difference between a Monte Cristo and a Manhattan? 
Uh, Monte Cristo is a ham and cheese that's like... So many things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like deep fried and then they put powdered sugar on the whoa, top. Whoa, 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 it's deep fried? Yeah, they just... I thought, it, had, I thought it had gravy as well. Like no, 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 no. Oh, it's I thought got it was powdered like sugar. Okay, well, I thought we were talking about the world record for cannolis when this... Son, how did this get into Ace pressing his <laughs> buttocks know. against the window of Pat? Sure, I'm Canola, glad. Uh, the rim job uh, restaurant or whatever? Yeah, yeah that's what it was. Oh, yeah, rim yeah. Cafe. doing the cannolis. Yeah. The rim job restaurant. Okay, good. Uh, and uh, time now for Stupid World Record. A uh, university professor broke a record for the longest time living underwater without depressurization this weekend at a Florida Keys Lodge for scuba divers. They're still looking for his eyes <laughs> floating up there somewhere. University of South Florida professor Joseph Deturi spent his 74th day underwater Saturday without air. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Is this, is this guy in an RV or something? I mean, no, he's in a lot. It's a scuba diver's lodge. It's a lodge. For Weird. Scuba yeah. No, so it's it's like a, a condo underwater. And is yeah. it filled with water, or is he dry? It's, He'd have to he's be dry. dry. Okay. It's called uh, fins. So he swims down to this thing and gets in it. Yes. Oh, okay. So it's like where Sandy lives in SpongeBob SquarePants. Yeah. Okay, cool. What kind of place is this? <laughs> he submerged March 1st and doesn't plan to resurface until June 9 when the re mission reaches 100 days. He spent the record breaking day at the bottom of the 30 foot deep lagoon in Key Lago, much like the previous days, eating eggs and salmon prepared with a microwave. Well, of course, the salmon was talk about fresh. <laughs> Sure, sure. The eggs, not so much. He exercised with resistance bands and did daily push-ups. It kind of looks like a big diving bell. It's yeah. called Project Neptune. Is he there by himself? Uh-huh. So how's he going to get... So he has to slowly repressurize so he doesn't get the bends? At 30 feet? No. No, he's only at 30 feet. That's only one atmosphere. I think he should be careful. 30 feet one one atmosphere, I think, every 30 feet. You don't atmosphere. think he has to do anything at all, being under that? I mean, oh, he's it's gotta, added pressure. He's got to take the bucket of jizz and get oh, rid of that. Yeah. Yeah. The bucket of <laughs> what, 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 what is that? Help. That's not even a joke. It's just gross. <laughs> he's, you can always just pour it out the portal and blame it on the sperm whale. Oh. <laughs> he's been masturbating. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's been be vigorously masturbating. <laughs> He's been masturbating down there for about 74 days. <laughs> is, do they have cameras and stuff on him? Or he just... Well, I just showed you a picture, so apparently somebody is doing something. How does the air filtrate, do we know? Mm -mm. They probably just have a pump up top. <sighs> God, is he smelling weak old farts? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do they have a, is there a, I, I assume there's an escape hatch in the event that the air system would fail, so there'd be some kind of power failure. I'm sure. I would assume they have a generator standing by. So this could, this, this uh, diver's hangout could be anywhere. It could, yeah, yeah, it could be anywhere. Unlike a submarine, though, this lodge does not use technology to adjust for the increased underwater pressure. Well, so. yeah, but the building... Keeps right, the pressure off of him. But if you're well, well, don't no. don't um, don't military submarine people stay underwater for months at a time? So and, and yeah, but there's so you're saying that the building was already depressurized when he entered in. So no, not necessarily. I, the, the, when he got into the building, it was no. There's extreme pressure because no, he I, said I, I, the uh, research <laughs> includes daily experiments no, to no. monitor how the human body responds to long-term exposure to extreme pressure. No, I see. Okay. Okay. I bet all. Well, of, I bet none of his pants will fit now. Pretty soon, it's going to be time for the 9:30 Jack experiment. <laughs> see how it, He's doing. And by the way, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't finish in four minutes, I, I harpoon you. How's that for pressure? Watch Dean. He's doing um, interviews, broadcast interviews. If you'd like, to get a hold of him. Uh, no, 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 thanks. <laughs> we don't wanna... Dean's not even looking up ever since <laughs> the goat incident. <laughs> Good morning, Bob and Tom gang. This is from Dave. Congrats to Chrissy on the graduation of her daughter, uh, Sophie. Sophie. Thank uh, you. My daughter gave birth this Saturday Aww. to my second granddaughter. No, no, it's not a happy story. She's 11. <laughs> named her... Wow! <laughs> we named her Ava Claire after your other. Oh, that's oh. nice. That comes up in our news in a and uh that we had a, a long email about someone who went through bell fountain ohio and said that was my hometown that is not my hometown it's london ohio and chick i've been through your hometown of london with its beautiful historic courthouse that's right it's famous uh, the county seat of madison county that's right 
And one of the lesser novels of the 1990s. I am the county seat of Madison <laughs> County. That's right. <laughs> the, the bridges of Madison County. No, that, that, yeah, that, so, that was the yeah, reference. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can make a custom sign proclaiming the hometown of national radio personality on the Bob and Tom Show, Chick McGee, and place them on both the north and southbound entrances <laughs> on Route 42. I agree. I'm friends with the judge of Madison County, so I can get permission first if you'd, if you'd have to. There you go. But I say we just go ahead and do it. <laughs> Let me know if you'd like to do that, and I'll send you a picture after I place them. It will cost taxpayers $700 per household. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes, but look what you, look what you get. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Property get to, rates go up. You get to see that every time you go in and out of town. Bronze yeah. statue, I say. Oh. Naked. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I mean, I'm thinking kind of like um, uh, Rodin's The Thinker, except you're looking at a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Playing Wordle. When we come back, uh, we have the Loch Ness Monster in the news. Speaking of names. Yeah, we have baby names in Baby the names. The number one baby names for boys and girls in the I U.S. Ava's in there. It's in there. It's not number one, but it's in there. Um, and uh, and our special uh, military request coming up. Uh -huh. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. The show is also out there for you on our YouTube channel. Watch and subscribe. And, uh, and you're strapping on a guitar. And now, what, are you going to play your new one here? No, I'll play. I'll play a new one. Okay. I'm not like Haywood. I can't write a song about two minutes, but... Uh, I don't know, but you had a really good one you played last time I really liked. There we go. That's, that's working. Wayne had a wreck with a big old buzz. And you couldn't tell what kind of car that was. He rolled it in a field where he turkey hunts. That's four total cars in the past six months. But Wayne must not have learned his lesson yet. He just stuck a handicap tag on a black Corvette. <laughs> Who the hell puts a handicap tag on a black Corvette? The lost of me bag and the cast is still wet. The shattered left leg with his neck in a brace. Wayne's trying to get to heaven in a high-speed chase. He's squealing tires and won't turn around. Got on a damp diaper in a hospital gown. <laughs> doing a 120 in black fiberglass. Got a nurse on call and a cop up his ass. <laughs> on 14 prescriptions for a compacted desk. Wayne's doctor's worried and his wife is pissed. And the news chopper chase. Chasing him up in the air. Wayne could give a damn about Obamacare. And his all state agents getting all upset. Who the hell puts a handicap tag on a black Corvette? Amen. Hey, Let's do the big Bruce Springsteen in it. Uh huh. Old surfer who was attacked by a shark off South Australia's coast. School teacher Simon Macanello was surfing with others Saturday when he was attacked. Police will continue to search the area beaches for remains. It's the first fatal shark attack in Australia since two occurred back in February. And a university professor has broken the record for the longest time living underwater without depressurization. 
He did it this weekend at a Florida Keys Lodge for scuba divers. University of South Florida professor Joseph Deturi spent his 74th day underwater Saturday in a Key Largo Lodge for scuba divers. He submerged March 1st and doesn't plan to resurface until June 9th when his mission reaches 100 days. He spent the record-breaking day at the bottom of a 30-foot deep lagoon in Key Largo, much like he had with the previous days, eating eggs and salmon, prepared with a microwave, and exercising with resistance bands and doing daily push-ups. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. Hey, Shooter, it's Kenny Tarmac. Hey, we just landed. I'm an ORD, just got in from TPA through ATL. And hey, guess what else just landed? The Bob and Tom app. I know, I know. Now, thanks to the Bob and Tom app, even if I have to go all the way from Foxtrot 20 down to Alpha 4, I can still listen live, see their videos, find an affiliate station, use the alarm, and even send a message. This is Kenny Tarmac signing off and reminding you everything I touch turns to sold. Hi, this is Bob and Tom 24-7. My name is Jim Gaffigan. I have to go and, well, I just had a hot So you know where I'm going. The most unfair thing about life is the way it ends, right? Mm-hmm. For the death. What's that, a bonus? <laughs> no. Life is tough. It should be reversed. You die first. Get it out of the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then you live in an old age home. You get kicked out when you're too young. You get a gold watch. You go to work. <laughs> you work for 40 years till you're young enough to enjoy your retirement. <laughs> you go to college, you do drugs, alcohol, you party, you get ready for high school. <laughs> go to school, you become a kid, you play, you have no responsibilities, become a little baby, go back into the womb, spend your last nine months floating. Uh, you finish off as a gleam in somebody's eye. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bravo. 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 Hey, guy, it's Kid Tarmac. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Kid Tarmac. Mike Birbiglia is our guest. Are you dating anyone? Do you have a... I, I realize what I need to find is a woman who loves me for my money but doesn't understand math. <laughs> I don't know this girl, and uh, she wasn't too bright. She wasn't, like, book smart. Uh -huh. She was, like, magazine smart uh -huh. or uh, butter label smart. <laughs> I don't know this girl, middle of the day, I swear to God, and she goes, you know what turns me on? I go, what? And she said, black guys. <laughs> which, which I really found discouraging. Because I've been mistaken for a lot of things in my life. But I've never, never had anyone be like, you're black, right? <laughs> no, I'm Olive Garden Italian. Now, uh, Dwight Slade is, is our guest. Uh, now, Dwight is a very healthy guy. But you were saying that you had a uh, colonic? I had a colonic. It's a water skiing accident that you do on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> this is where they, yeah. they, they fill your uh, lower cavity yeah, with... Why don't you walk me through this? With water. Oh, no. Is there an audio component to this uh, as the uh, revealing <laughs> is taking place? <laughs> like nothing I've ever heard. Uh, uh, yeah, they play, uh, they play this. <laughs> <laughs> there it goes now. <laughs> Hey, this is comedian Ron White, and you're listening to... Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hey. There's Pat Godwin. Hello. He's in the performance room. There's Josh Arnold. Jixter. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning. And tonight on Get Leonard. Yeah. <laughs> First live action cartoon cop show. Uh, coming up, we're going to talk with <laughs> comedians Greg Warren and Bert Kreischer will be our guest. Bert, Bert, Bert. In an hour. We'll look forward to talking to Bert once again. Real quick uh, plug here, our friend comedian Greg Morton, who was just here a month or so ago, he's going to be at Comedy Off-Broadway in Lexington this week starting Thursday evening, so Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We'll also talk, as I mentioned, with, uh, with uh, Greg Warren with the Warren Report in a matter of moments. Uh, Greg, this weekend, is going to be at the MGM in Springfield, Massachusetts. So we'll look forward to both those things. Now, uh, we return to the sports page? Nope, know. that's it. Oh, we're done? Yep. Okay, okay, okay. All done, all through? That, okay, that's a good sportscast. Uh, yeah. Uh, sportscast? Well sportscast is closed. This is what you find it for. Well, you know, that's what they say at Bingo. Bingo? That's a good bingo. Bingo's closed. Oh, they do? Yeah. Oh. 
Because they check the numbers and they make sure you're not cheating. Boy, if they're if it's not a good bingo, people lose their I'm minds. Their mind because How a lot dare of, you? Because and they'll say, "Hold your cards." Yeah, because a lot of people yeah. do clear their Hold cards. Your cards. Yeah. Hold your card, Tom. We should go play bingo one night, Tom. Me and you. You give us time to talk. Well, you could talk at me. It would be great. <laughs> I'd have to. I don't know. I have to focus if I'm playing bingo. You ever take you one have of those to little focus? The bingo sticker things that you use looks like a glue stick. The you dauber? Ever, yeah. The you ever dauber. take one of those and make oh, your yeah. brother polka dot it? A lot of fun. Oh, that's funny. Looks like a leopard. <laughs> <laughs> How many cards can you play at once? Uh, uh, me, barely one. I, I, I do not multitask well. Six. That's what I used to Six. do. Yep. That's a good number. A lot of this. What did he call? What was that last number? <laughs> what was the last number? <laughs> Christy, what's up? A YouTuber admitted to crashing his plane on purpose in order to gain views on uh, his video on I mean, social media. Sentenced to death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seems a little harsh, but maybe uh, you're right. According to a news release from the U.S. Attorney's Office, Mr. Trevor Jacob told authorities he planned the crash for a video he made for promotional purposes. Isn't this against federal law? I believe yeah. so. In the 2021 incident, he ejected out of the plane and parachuted to the ground as the, as his plane descended and crashed. In addition to getting rid of the wreckage to hinder federal investigators, the 29-year-old also lied about the incident to authorities. Did he feign that... Was the video like, oh, I, I, I'm going down, and you I can see, and there's, it's a multi-camera video. What? And he, and, and he, he, he also just happens to, I guess, have one of those sticks, whatever they're called, selfie them. stick. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it's, it's really interesting to watch it, but about he a month. Also happens to be wearing a parachute. Okay. About a month after the wreck, he uploaded a YouTube video called "I Crashed My Airplane." The former Olympic snowboarder agreed to plead guilty to one count of destruction and concealment with the intent to obstruct a federal investigation. Wow. Whose plane was it? Did he own the plane? Did he that's rent it? I don't know. Whoa, that's an expensive video. Yeah, it can't be cheap. No. Uh, for for likes? Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, it's, I mean, that's, yeah. That's, I guess likes equal money and... Uh, that's what you know people are gonna pull this kind of stuff yeah but i mean it, he's a he's a, he's in a very remote area but i mean what if the, what if the plane had landed on somebody <laughs> well there's a nice place to pitch a tent game all right no one around here for 50 miles <laughs> nice day Is there a buzzing and a whistling <laughs> <laughs> what if his parachute hadn't opened i mean a lot of things could have gone uh, wrong well here. that would have been a good thing but well, yes i want him dead yeah. Hmm. Now, uh, on a much lighter <laughs> note, yeah, uh, um, we we have we have a special request here for a guy that's um, leaving the military after a long career there. Well, took the you. time and trouble to write us, Scott, in Colorado Springs. Thank Congratulations, you, Congratulations, sir. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. And we're going to play a little something for you. Is uh, this an honorable discharge sort of thing? Yes, it is. And I, I thought uh, since he's a man in uniform, we'd play something about a woman. All right, sir. In uniform, and here it is. New this season on the Bob and Tom Television Network. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. <laughs> it's a plane. It's the biggest set of jugs I've ever seen. <laughs> it's Shirtless Girl. <laughs> Posing as a topless dancer, showing off her pants. No one knows her secret till she takes off her specs. She's Shirtless Girl. Shirtless Girl. <laughs> With her special powers, she gives the bad guys fits. She don't use no gun. She stops them with her tits. She's shirtless girl. Shirtless girl. Working in the chemistry lab one day, sophomore year, nothing seemed amiss. But that night, an amazing transformation took place. And the next morning, young Debbie Yabo woke to find... My God! I'm huge! I must dedicate these to fighting evil. <laughs> Little did Debbie know that years before on the planet Lactoid, a planet whose gravity was causing it to sag dangerously toward the sun, her father, Major Yabo, and mother Teton sent their infant daughter, Areola, rocketing through the Milky Way to Earth. 
knowing one day she'd become shirtless girl, <laughs> keeping the city of Metopolis safe. <laughs> Okay, nobody move. Hand over all the money. <laughs> it's shirtless girl! Not so fast, bad guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, like some team is gonna get a load of these. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> oh, I can't run away. <laughs> Hell, I can't even walk. <laughs> Thanks, shirtless girl. You're welcome, citizens. Don't touch those. Sorry. <laughs> Along with her fellow superheroines, Wonder Bra Woman, Bikini Spider Woman, The Flash, and the Green Horny, Shirtless Girl formed the Legion of Super Hooters. <laughs> Look, it's the cat signal. Some boob must need help. I better call my teenage bosom buddy A Cup and head to the wet cave. I know. I'll use the Hooter Scooter. <laughs> and once again, Charles Girl, you've kept Metopolis safe. Warm and snug and soft. <laughs> Bouncy. <laughs> once again, defeating your arch enemy, the Jiggler. We are grateful. Thanks, shirtless girl. Yay! You're welcome, <laughs> citizens. <laughs> Touch those. Sorry. <laughs> Come again next week for another titillating adventure of Shirtless Girl. I'm Shirtless Girl. Shirtless Girl. <laughs> shirtless Girl. Only on the Bob and Tom Television Network. <laughs> Thank you very much. Once again, uh, sending that out to Colorado Springs. And uh, Scott, have a great retirement, Scott. We yes. appreciate all you've done. Now, uh, coming up in the news, Christy Lena, we have Greg Warren coming up and comedian Bert Kreischer. What have you got Do over you there? take an everything shower? We'll talk about that. We have the Loch Ness Monster. We have the most popular baby names from 2022. If you're about to name a baby. Is or... Nessie one of them? Nessie's not. Oh, that's a shame. I named my baby Sweetheart. Did Honey you? Bun. Oh. Honey Bun. Snookums. <laughs> Snookums. <laughs> Butter buns. Remember last week? Butter buns. He claimed that uh, somebody's ki kid, they named their kid Stig. <laughs> That's a true story. It's very De Niro. He said one of De Niro's kids was named Stig. Yeah, he's got seven. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom goes, Stig. <laughs> Is that a Swedish name, though? He's part yeah. Swedish. Okay. You don't know this about De Niro. I did not. <laughs> There's Leonard, Arthur. His family meatballs were amazing. Sam Char <laughs> yeah. Charlie. Half Swedish appetite. Sam Unbelievable. Stan. So good. And Bobby uh, Jr. <laughs> uh, got a nice letter here about uh, uh, someone who has been listening to the show and they got themselves some Raycon earbuds. Mm -hmm. Nice nice letter. Do you have that over there, Chuck? I bought a pair of Raycons because I heard the guys and the gal and the show talk about them. And I got to say, they are the best pair of earbuds I have ever had. They came with different attachments, made them fit perfectly in my ear. Phone calls crystal clear, and the microphone makes my voice come over the other end just as clear, and I think a little more smart. And with the different sound modes, it makes my music sound phenomenal. I've had Beats and AirPods before, and these, the Raycons, blow the competition out of the water. I will never buy another brand of earbuds, and I have the Bob and Tom Show to thank for that. Well, thank you, sir. Raycon, you can get a pair and a spare and still pay less than you would with some of those other big-name techie brands out there. Raycon knows that in this economy, every purchase has to be looked at and looked at and looked at again. They offer buy now, pay later options, an easy and free return guarantee, free domestic shipping and flat fee international shipping, and 50,000 five-star reviews. And eight hours of playback, crystal clear call quality, and water and sweat resistant. So go to buyraycon.com slash Tom today and get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom, 15% off your Raycon purchase. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. Coming up, we've got smugglers. We've got how to fill a balloon with your farts. <laughs> and uh, on a much more pleasant yeah. note, comedian Greg Warren and comedian Bert Kreischer. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Last time you were here, Eric, you impressed us with your uh, musical skills. You uh, oh, that's right. You, you are, are a manualist. manualist. Yes, I am. Now, for those that don't know what that means, 
Manualism is the um, art. art of manipulating one's hands to make, uh, there you go, to make that sound. <laughs> that wasn't me yet. I didn't. Okay, there, there we go. <laughs> you, oh, you man. must be, Sorry, uh, excuse you me. must kick ass that at my, parties. That was my no hands. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know the chicks dig this. Yeah, well, I know they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're at a party. Yeah, this is my, Eric, this is my, this, I go, this is my go-to on a first date. I'm going to say, if you're at a party hey, and you see Eric and there's a big group of guys hanging around him, this is what they're doing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they're looking, yeah, they're looking. Uh -huh. and, then, and then my Dungeons and Dragons kit too. Uh -huh. doing that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, give us a sample. All right, there you go. Very nice. <laughs> Push it. <laughs> I see the see the group of guys laughing now at yeah. the party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? Wow. While well, the girls are all over there Have rolling you, their eyes. That is amazing. Have you ever been laid doing that? <laughs> <laughs>
Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. There's Christy Lee at the news desk. Hi. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. Getting ready for his mooning of Pat Godwin. <laughs> Very excited about it. There's <laughs> Willie Griswold. Hey, hey. I'm Chick McGee. I just had some peanut peanut M&Ms. Oh, good choice. Here's Tom Griswold. Oh, thank you very much, Chick. Uh, now, um, I believe we're going to hook up with uh, comedian Greg Warren. There he is. Oh. Uh, uh, Greg uh, is uh, on his way to Massachusetts, I believe. Ah, uh, you're going to Massachusetts. That's a joke. Knew, I was thinking the same thing, Chick. Uh Coming up Friday and Saturday, right there, Greg? That's right. Yeah. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hi, Hi nice hey, to see you. Baby blue eyes. Yes. Looking good. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> A little tired. Uh, yeah, no. yeah. I just didn't get much when sleep are, last when night. When are they going to fix the latency in these broadcasts? Because uh, everybody does Zoom now. Don't you think they could just snip some of that delay out so they, you know, you can hear us almost instantly <laughs> instead of just using words and... <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> am I am I uh, delayed? Is just that? a second, oh, just yeah. a little bit. We're, we're, it's fine. No can, more than we, normal. We can hear you. <laughs> um, you just you look a little tired. So I, I I'm just saying. No, no, I'm I'm uh, I'm feeling good. Feeling good. Good, good. good. Glad to hear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You should be. Your Excited. special's killing it. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, excited to talk to you guys. Good. The uh, salesman. <laughs> and the YouTube. special is called the salesman. How do you watch it, Josh? YouTube, my friend. Go to Greg Warren, the salesman. Just type that into the old search bar and you're gonna get uh some good good comedy <laughs> a lot of your um well they're not called smart tvs they're called <clears throat> really smart tvs and they will uh come up it, as i have a greg warren picture right there when you you turn your tv on you just click on that boom there you are that's how it knew that's it, good to hear that's what did it that's for me yeah wow i did, didn't even have to look for did it. you say greg warren into the tv uh -huh. No, TV just came on. Boom, there he is. How did, I, you know, how did they know you were looking for him? I don't know, man. It's almost like somebody. <laughs> I think most people to know Chick and I are pretty close no, friends. We're, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, the closest. Come on. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, now, what's our topic for today, Greg? Uh, Tom, uh, you know, we're getting to the summer months. There's going to be a lot of camping, campfires, that sort of thing. So <laughs> uh, I to talk. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think Greg knew what no, he did. He did. Oh, he did. Really? Yeah. Oh. We've been teasing Christy because she says things like camping <laughs> and caviar. And I and, don't mean to. It just comes a, out. A candle. Yeah. yeah. So, well, sorry. I had I had no knowledge of that, Christy. I, oh. feel, I feel like you kind of attacked me right there. I did. I, I didn't know, I didn't we didn't know mean to attack you. I didn't mean to attack you, but I'm very defensive. <laughs> so camping. Uh, I want to talk about the uh, the history of uh, the treat s'mores. Oh, very good. Oh, you're Tom's a, a big fan. Yeah, oh, Tom loves is. s'mores. Yes, he does. Tom, you like s'mores? I do, and I like to make them with uh, the kids. Uh, I've got the special sticks for the marshmallows. <laughs> Greg, you should know this though. Tom kind of pronounces the apostrophe. He 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 will say s'mores. Yes. Uh, I don't think that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it couldn't be more wrong, and it, uh, it irritates and makes other people irate. But, mm -hmm. yeah, he, some mores. Well, actually, Tom, uh, until, uh, well, in 1927, when uh, uh, there was a uh, an article published in a, uh, a a Girl Scout handbook, the, the handbook is called Tramping and Trailing with the Girl Scouts. <laughs> uh -huh. huh. uh, take that for what it which will uh, <laughs> the there was an article uh, published with a recipe for some space more huh. wow that, there was there was no contraction back then uh, the recipe was uh, by Loretta Scott crew and uh, it said toast two marshmallows over the coals to a crisp gooey state <laughs> put them inside a graham cracker and chocolate bar sandwich Mm. The heat of the marshmallow between the halves of the chocolate bar will melt the chocolate a bit. Though it tastes like some more, one is really enough. Huh. Um, so, yeah, they, they weren't uh, contracting back then. Uh, first evidence of the contraction s'more came uh, 1938 in a publication aimed at uh, summer camps. Uh, that's when uh, it said uh, s'more. That's when you had the apostrophe in there. So So basically... Uh, between somewhere between 1927 and 1938, they started uh, contracting some more. Ah. Mm. But the well, recipe the, is essentially the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the Great Depression, so maybe they probably had a lazier form of speech at that point. Everybody was hopeless. 
Uh, yeah. And the term, yeah, some more seemed like sort of a stupid thing because there was none. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there, back then there was a lot less. Yeah. 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 Don't, ask, yeah. don't ask for some more. Be happy with the crumb you have. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. What, okay. What you got. Um, some, of, some of my favorite contractions, a little sidebar here, I would say uh, J-Lo, mm -hmm. uh uh, Flo Jo, that's Florence uh, Griffith <laughs> Joyner. Yeah. Right, right. O'Clock, you know, that's a, that's a contraction. You guys mm -hmm. know Is that? it of the clock? Mm -hmm. Of the clock, that's right. So uh, my one of my favorite uh, chain restaurants, O'Charlie's, is actually of the Charlie's. That's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Good rolls. Ma'am, that's a contraction. Ma'am. Ma'am. That's, that's from Madam, yeah. Oh, Charlie's never uh, took off in Vietnam, did it, Tom? <laughs> No, it didn't. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you something. At one point, oh, Charlie, definitely in charge. I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. Charlie in charge. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, the U.S. Department of Agriculture says that uh, s'mores are, are not a healthy snack, and they have uh, recommended a substitute. This oh, is, boy. Oh, no. It's just, no, Josh, it's just like s'mores. All right. Uh, Instead of the marshmallows, you use low-fat vanilla yogurt. Oh. Yeah. And instead of the strawberry or uh, chocolate, you use strawberries. Uh, In graham crackers? I tried this. Uh, I tried this last night. Uh, the, the yogurt falls right off the stick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 these things the aren't good. Uh, some people call these things uh, Nemours. <laughs> <laughs> These sucks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly like a s'more, isn't it? That's yeah, uh, oh, they perfect did. replacement. Uh. It's like instead of watching a prize fight, I could uh, read the instruction manual for my <laughs> air fryer. <laughs> so there's no there's no need for a campfire. No, it'd be cold. It wouldn't even be hot. That uh, it's a horrible idea. They they need to stick to. Cattle. Uh, it'd be these. real. <laughs> it'd be real chewy, right? Sure. Yeah. Mm. Also, who yeah, eats it's... yogurt when they go camping? What a <laughs> jerk! It's 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 it, yeah. Uh, it, it really angered me, Willie. I, yeah. I these <laughs> agriculture dummies. Uh, you know the uh, supposedly that's the the city that eats the most s'mores. <laughs> uh, that's Grand Rapids, Michigan. How about oh, that? Sure. What the heck? Why? Mm. I don't know. I was there um, two months ago. Yeah. Didn't see one guy eating s'mores. <laughs> I think. I wonder if it's just like uh, like two fat guys that are influencing the whole deal. You know, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Just like, aren't you guys don't what, don't you guys all eat s'mores? No, that's just uh, Jimmy and Joey. Yeah, they, they, sit up there, like, <laughs> they really set the curve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, that, let's talk about sort of the ingredients you have. Of course, uh, the graham cracker is yeah. the, the key piece there. Huh. Uh, the graham cracker was invented by uh, a weirdo, uh, <laughs> Sylvester Graham. Okay. Sylvester, uh, he was a guy that, uh, well, he was the first fad diet. He had some pretty good ideas around cold showers and uh, sleeping on hard surfaces and uh, uh, vegetarianism. But he basically felt like the the he he wasn't a fan of uh, sexual thoughts or sex or especially uh, should I say sex with oneself? Okay. Um, so was he similar? He was similar to Kellogg. Yeah. Kellogg was a disciple of this guy. Ah. Okay. Uh, oh. Yeah. Okay. Kellogg was a follower of this. This guy started it. Oh, um, sly. And he uh, invented graham crackers uh, as a very bland food because he felt like spicy foods is what caused you to uh, oh, yeah. want to have a lot of sex. <laughs> oh, sure. Especially, sure. Yeah, spicy food, which I, it seems pretty stupid. And the, the original graham cracker was nothing like we have today. It was uh, very, very bland, not sugary. Uh, it, it, it was awful. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, I, it doesn't make – yeah, he thought spicy foods basically were what caused you to want to have sex. I don't know. I think maybe he was just watching a lot of episodes of The Love Boat uh, featuring <laughs> Charo. Where he was like, oh, oh, she's Latin American. She eats spicy food, and she's oversexed. Uh, this, we're going to put a stop to this uh, hoochie-coochie business. <laughs> she's, pretty, uh, she's pretty sexy, though, Tom, wouldn't you think, Charo? And a fine guitar player. Yeah. Amazing. Chick, uh, probably the first time I was uh, aware of uh, sex was Charo? Uh, no kidding. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. She used it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Would you could go fair, go fair. I was, I was doing charo there. Yeah, guys. Yeah. Her hips the did boat. not yeah. lie, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> those are the two big boobs. <laughs> <laughs> those didn't she, lie either. I love those things. Yeah. She, she loved Coogie though, right? Xavier Cougat called him Coogie. I think you're oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Who did she like? Xavier Xavier Cougat was a band leader, and that was her husband. She's mm -hmm. still around. Is she really? No, she's yeah. got to be 90,000 oh. years old. Uh, no, she's in, in her early 70s. Uh-huh, yeah, I am too. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Sylvester uh, Sylvester Graham would, would not have cared for her. No, no. no. She, he he would have put her in a mechanic's jumpsuit and had her eat old, old school Graham crap. <laughs> <laughs> she's only 72? Uh, yeah. Really? She's relatively young. Yeah. The, um, now, the... Uh, <laughs> Are you a fan of putting the marshmallows in the fire? Do you want it to catch on fire, or do you like to just get it lightly browned? What is your philosophy? Well, it's been a long time since I've done it. I I, I, I would probably just, I don't have the patience, so I just set it on fire. Uh, yeah. Let it burn. You're one of those guys. I bet you are too, Arnold. You set it on fire? I like it. No, you have no respect for the crap. When I make a s'more, it takes me 20 minutes. I hold 20 it, minutes? I hold it like a foot and a half above the fire. I rotate quite slowly. Oh. It's an art. It tastes delicious. Now, do you prefer the what stick or do you like the long metal fork? Uh, the long metal fork is ideal, but I'll go with sort of a whittled stick. You got to get that bit of bark off there. Yeah, that's yeah. fun because then you got the, the opportunity to catch the stick on fire if you're not careful. <laughs> so this hey, is, let me it's ask part you guys of the artistry of campfire use. Yeah. Please. Uh, this recipe that uh, Loretta Scott crew uh, put in that book, it calls for uh, chocolate on, on both sides of the marshmallow. Is that how you guys do it? No. No. Uh -uh. I don't think anybody. It's a one-side right? deal, right? Yeah. I'm not opposed to it. Uh, in fact, sometimes my s'mores end up just being no marshmallow, no graham cracker. And <laughs> how did you Josh, put the chocolate on the stick? No, no, I'll oh, just well. have a Hershey bar. <laughs> that's exactly what I did, Josh, when I was a kid. <laughs> My mom was kind of a health food nut, so we went camping. We yeah. got to have a lot of treats, and I saw all those Hershey bars in the cooler, and I was like, screw the... <laughs> yeah. They're just getting in the way. You, uh, Again, walk... eliminating the point of the campfire. <laughs> eating, a, eating a Hershey bar, then you walk up and go, what you doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are you guys making? What are you guys making? Oh, what are you guys making? Uh, I'm going to have another um, Hershey bar. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you guys were, were correct. Uh, uh, Kellogg was the, uh, he was a disciple. Of course, he, he believed that, uh, you know, masturbation was uh, the root of all evil, and that's why he made cornflakes. Mm -hmm. They were originally bland. Did you guys know, though, that his uh, his brother was like, yeah, my brother's an idiot. We're going to put sugar <laughs> in the cornflakes, and we're going to sell a ton of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're, they're, well, let's talk about marshmallows. It came from the uh, the early mallow uh, plant in Egypt. Uh, and uh, it had like a goo in it. And then people started adding sugar and starch in there. And then people figured out, well, we can just make these without the plant. Ah, good. Right. Yeah. Man, I, you're a s'more guy, Tom. Are you aware of these gourmet marshmallows? No. Yes. Gourmet I, marshmallows. I, yeah, I looked at. I was looking at marshmallows. Uh, apparently, the reviews say Jet Puffed are the best ones. Um, I've heard Campfire of those. Giant Roasters are mm. really, really good. But there's a Hammond Vanilla Bean Marshmallow. Mm. Out Whoa! There, and it sounds pretty amazing to me. Wow, I've not heard of that. Those are the uh, eleven dollars a marshmallow, right? Wow. Yeah. I'll pay it. Sounds like a good deal. Uh, Greg, do you feel like we should be saying marshmallow? What's up, mallow? Uh, What's that? Uh, I don't know. That's what a lot of the guys in my high school would say. Uh, They'd say, what's up, mallow? Hey, what's up, mallow? Mallow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hey, mallow. The, uh, Greg, I just looked these up. Hammond's vanilla bean marshmallows are square. They're yeah. cubes. Hmm. Eh, what do you? How they're not. Do you feel about they're not that? the. They're not the cylindrical ones that we're familiar with. Well, but I this would be great would be, for a for yes. the Samora. Would be. Yes. Would be, hmm. I'm gonna it have to go be. try some of these, Greg. Yeah, I'm gonna. I think maybe next time I come in, I owe you guys some of those um, 
fritters that I was telling you about on the donut report. Oh, sure. Don't uh, waste time on getting those. Oh, yeah. I'm you brought bring... donuts in, and they, the, but they weren't the fritters, were they? You messed well, that shit, up. Well, they ran out of fritters. I'm well, sorry. Well, then don't bring do anything in. Just <laughs> keep your mouth shut. Come you in. ate oh. several of those donuts. I, I did, and that's my <laughs> business. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys familiar with the Malamar cookie? Yes. yes. Yeah. Sure. Not not a huge fan. Yeah, they're saying here that those taste just like s'mores. No. No, nothing tastes like a s'more. No. That's exact and they're also saying that moon pies taste like s'mores. No. Which, uh, no. I never got that at all. Yeah, I've eaten they... several moon pies. I never got that. Hmm. All the ingredients are there though, aren't they? But yeah, yeah but they don't taste like a s'more. But the grand along with the cookie 80, thing 000... is weird. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, chemicals in the moon pie. By the way, Greg, I think that hey, Mallow, I think What's that's up, Mallow? I think that's a way of calling you Whitey. I think is it? I don't, I I think, don't it is. think so. What's up? I don't think What's so. What's up, Mallow? Yeah, that's why. Well, the voicey effect it doesn't suggest <laughs> that, there, that there was a racial component at all. <laughs> play it, play it again. The, the, what's up, Mallow? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. It's yeah, a yeah, good time yeah. to end it, I think, really. <laughs> either uh, either Mallow that's, that's going to be our closer. Mallow or Uncle Charlie. Uh, and by either closer, one. I mean we're changing the subject. Right. Uh, hey, Greg, once again, Greg Warren is going to be on stage um, in Springfield, Massachusetts, this weekend. It says it's uh, you're at the Roar at the MGM. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, uh, MGM Casino. Oh, All okay. right. Okay, that's and that's yep. this uh, this Friday and Saturday. And Greg's comedy special is great. It's on YouTube, and it's called The Salesman. With Greg Warren, check it out. Okay. Thanks, Greg. We'll look Thank forward you, to talking to you next week. Hey guys, uh, good talking to you. I'll, I'll uh, talk to you soon. Yes. Love you, handsome. We'll make some s'mores next time yeah. we're here. I promise. Uh, speaking of great food, uh, Hello Fresh has some more great ideas for you in the world of cooking. How does Hello Fresh work? Well, they do the shopping, so that saves you a ton of time. They do special shopping because they're buying for, for the specific recipes that they provide. They do the measuring as well, so you just put it together. Sometimes in as little as ten minutes, we're talking about uh, forty recipes at least every week, and the ent an entire array of selections including, by the way, um, a lot, hundreds, really, of, uh, of sides and snacks and desserts from the HelloFresh marketplace. Now, here's what you do. You go to HelloFresh.com slash BTShow16. The 16 stands for the free meals plus the free shipping you get when you use that code, BTShow16, at HelloFresh.com slash BTShow16. HelloFresh, by the way, they know it's okay to be picky, and they want you to know that, too. So they've got all kinds of stuff from fit and wholesome to vegetarian, the entire array of food. And by the way, they're celebrating Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month with some authentic recipes created by Chef Serbi Sani of New York City's famous Tagmo restaurant. What do you got over there, Willie, right now? How about you check out the lemon tortelloni Palermo with roasted bell pepper and Parmesan. HelloFresh sends you eight ingredients. Put those together in six easy steps. In just over a half hour, you're enjoying this delicious, hearty pasta dish that you made at home with help from HelloFresh. You're going to save money. You're going to be eating great restaurant-quality food. Your taste buds will thank you. 16 free meals and free shipping. The code is BTSHOW16 at HelloFresh.com slash BTSHOW16. Coming up, we're going to talk with Bert Kreischer in just a few minutes. We also have the Everything Shower. We've got the Loch Ness Monster and more. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Got something to say? Send us an email. Bob and Tom at Bob. Yeah, let me see this uh, pair of panties with uh, well, it looks like the a, cushion. Yeah, see, and it's is it a regular pair of panties? God. Oh, look oh, at that. Four yeah. of us could fit in these. <laughs> Should I try these on? Can we see your butt right now? I mean, <laughs> sure, Bob. Well, I want to see the before and after. Well, well, I can't. well she's in a skirt, though. You well, really can't. Well, oh, okay. Well, I don't know. I'm, yeah. uh, okay. Yeah. Do you have yeah. monitors? No, I don't have them on. Well, that's uh, really uh, <laughs> rude. <laughs> wow, that's, that's your big ass. <laughs> wow. Look at this. <laughs> Nipper uh, attack! <laughs> <laughs> like, I Nipper! Kill! Kill it! Throw! Let him Nipper! Get him, Nipper! Do you have them on? Uh, no, your ass looks very nice. You don't need to put them on. That's not what you said. That's not what you said. No, I didn't see She had a big ass. No. All right, we need a before of Christie's butt. Take as long as you like, Dean. Come on. <laughs> Come on, smile. Uh -huh. Now, do you just put them on? Are you going to put them on? Can you... 
Oh, remember, uh, uh, Christy, the she padding put him on right The here. padding goes in the back yeah, now, I remember. Sure yeah, right. Just like pant. Oh, oh, she's, she's slipping them right on. So. Okay, wait a second. No, she's slipping them She has trick. a skirt on, so she can just put them right on. I didn't know we were okay. Dean, get some of that while you're at. Come on, Dean. You're not wearing. Come on, Dean. Are you wearing hose? Come on, what are you, queer, Dean? You're not, you wearing, you're not wearing hose, are you? <laughs> Women don't wear hose. No, are you wearing, but you're, are you wearing traditional panties right now? Yeah, boring. Okay. It's Friday, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just boring, ugly. Mm-hmm. No, no, I mean, but you do have panties on because those, yes. have, those okay. haven't been laundered. You might get some. So do you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dean. Make love to the camera, Christy. Go for it. Okay, now she's, now she's Dean, slipping. you can't. Could you, you, <laughs> get a, what's that? Allow a little bit of dignity. <laughs> Christy, oh, yeah. Christy Lee is now slipping on the, um, the booty pop okay, where's the cameras panty right. augment. Or, uh, what does it say in the on the? Okay. Okay. Now she's let's. See. Now so you got on. those on. So so now, now she's got the now, p- padded. Well, I'm curious on. if you sit down, do you feel the big cushion? Is it like being on a? Uh, no, that's me. On lawn furniture. Oh, yeah. that. Well, uh, that. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, baby's got back. Oh wow. You got. Looks like you've let's got. Take some, a look at that. Huh? Oh my God. <laughs> Let me Dude, see. Looks like you've got a huge ass tumor. Uh, <laughs> you've got ass you have tumor. You have shelf ass. Nice. So step uh, out from behind the monitors. Okay. Let's see what. Uh, let's see. What oh the, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh she, my God. Yeah, look at she's that. got. Yeah, she's got. Baby's got back now. Well, oh, that really does us pop yeah, them out. Yeah. It really, it, it really accentuates oh, yeah. oh, the, the yeah. backside of your backside. Oh yeah. Oh, that's look at that. Uh huh. Imagination, 1920s epic, Killers of the Flower Moon. Can't wait to see this great book. That stars Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro. And James Mangold's Indiana Jones in the Dial of Destiny. Harrison Ford in his final performance as Indiana Jones, of course. The festival runs through May 27th. And at the box office over the weekend, number one and number two remain the same. Guardians of the Galaxy 3, followed by Super Mario Brothers. Book Club, the next chapter came in at number three, and that's your news. I'm Christy Lee, more of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Hey, hi, this is Tom. And this is Chick from the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, Christy, what's the best way to get full access to the show? Hey, what you introduced me. Uh, that would be to become a Bob and Tom VIP. Very good. Now, Josh, what's a feature of Bob and Tom VIP? Wait a minute. Well, the live five-camera video stream of the show, plus a podcast of the show, and comedy from the Bob and Tom archives. Excellent. Chick, what do you have to say for yourself? Become a Bob and Tom VIP now. Just go to bobandtom.com slash VIP. See, that was worth the wait, wasn't it? Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. I can hear you, oh no. You're talking out your ass again. Bob and Tom 24-7. Kiwi Rogers is our guest. Kiwi, uh, having just met you, I can um, just guess you're obviously an, an athlete of some sort. Yeah, I work out a little bit. They have the whole thing where you, you get your you pump weights and all that stuff. Yeah. You got to have that cardiovascular, man. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I didn't have that cardiovascular. I was playing basketball the other day. They made me guard the worst dude on the other teams. <laughs> it was a fat dude wearing thongs. Right? You know, <laughs> oh! Standing on the court smoking a cigarette. You know I was a bad <laughs> And you couldn't keep up with him. I couldn't keep up with him. <laughs> <laughs> I got involved with that aerobics. Don't like aerobics. Man, that's too much like sex. Aerobics? Yeah, you sweat, muscles hurt, and then you got a woman up there telling you you're not doing it right. (laughs) (laughs) You don't say we didn't warn you. I'm warning you, don't do that. There's laughter ahead. I should be having a better time (laughs) if this was a part. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Records, milestones, firsts, lasts, and everything in between. What happened today in sports history on iHeartRadio? What's going on, fellow sports fans? It's Andy West. Let's look back on this day in sports, May 15th. We'll start today way back in 1918, where Washington Senators pitcher Walter Big Train Johnson pitched a Major League Baseball record 18-inning complete game shutout. That's unbelievable, considering most pitchers these days can't go nine innings. Not only did he pitch 18 innings, but the pitcher he defeated also was still pitching in the 18th, Claude Lefty T. Williams. He just happened to be on the losing end. Oh, and Walter Johnson also helped his cause in the 18th by getting a hit to send the eventual winning run to third base. 
Staying with baseball and incredible feats, today in 1941, Joe DiMaggio began his record-breaking hitting streak against the White Sox at Yankee Stadium with a single and an RBI. His 56-game hitting streak still stands today and has never really been challenged. The closest in modern-day baseball was Pete Rose in 1978 with 44 games. And let's wish a happy birthday to Emmett Smith, born today in Pensacola, Florida, 1969. The Pro Football Hall of Famer won the Super Bowl three times with the Cowboys and is still the NFL's all-time leading rusher, a number that may be tough to ever reach. Now you know, today in sports history on iHeartRadio. Are the stars out tonight? I don't care if it's cloudy or bright. Because I'm blind. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Hi, this is comedian Tim Cavanaugh, and you're listening. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Hey, there's Josh Arnold. Hi, Chick. Hi, there's Ace Cosby. <laughs> hey. There's uh, Willie Griswold. Big dog. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. We're going to talk with Bert Kreischer in about uh, 10 or 15 minutes. We're All right. Forward to that. See what the latest is with uh, The Machine. I watched the trailer for his movie. It looks fun. The Machine yeah. is coming out finally. <laughs> yeah. He's been working on it for a long time. It's one of the classic stories and true. That's what's so interesting about it. Uh, by the way, um, I mentioned a couple of uh, gigs coming up here. Reno Collier is going to be at the uh, Summit City Comedy Club in Fort Wayne coming up this Thursday. Oh, cool. And then over the weekend, he's at the Funny Bone in Dayton with Willie G. Going to be cool. fun. All right. Uh, and then uh, we'll be hearing from uh, Patty G coming up in a few minutes. There was some controversy on the program earlier this morning. Yeah. Because of this goat story. <laughs> and uh, Josh wanted to hear the audio. Well, I think the world did. Uh, we kept talking about it, and we'd never heard it. Oh, there was a story out of Oklahoma City that the uh, oh, police were called because they thought there was somebody screaming in the woods, and they went looking for him. And they thought it was it a was, human being. It was a yes, goat. It was a goat. We have the audio from this. Is what you wanted to hear? Is this going to yes. make you happy? <laughs> no. Uh, okay. <laughs> It'll shut him up for now. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Here, here we go. Me, me. Is it goat? Me, yeah, that's right. I'm a goat. Me, me. Josh Arnold is an ass. Me, me. Josh can kiss my hairy ass. Me. What is this? That's where a you smart came goat. from, Josh. Me, me. That's wild. Oh, that's uncanny. Oh, well, that's that's the audio. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe this is the real audio. Does it go? It sounds like a guy going hell. It does. That it sounds like that song. What song has it? Uh, ah, it there is. you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it sounds like someone crying for you. Yeah, it, it, it does. It, it, it's a goat. <laughs> Uh, now, Pat, do you want to favor us with your tune again? I, we, my, you want to hear Goat on the Roof again? Oh, I love yes. that song. Oh, and then, uh, uh, Tom, this was like laugh free. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know Why what? Why would you make him do it again? <laughs> because it's a long show. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that long. As I often like to say, I'll explain how radio works. Uh, <laughs> now, now, Pat, i got to explain this. So that was one story. That story made the uh, international news wire. By yes, the way. whatever that is. And, and it's, uh, okay. it's, it's a. Just good, say international uh, news. Yeah, but uh, this this gives it a certain... I don't think it's a wire anymore, no, either. No, there's no I wire I think it's... Yeah. So what would you have called, this, what would you have called the show The Wire? Well, that, that wasn't about the... <laughs> it's about wearing a wire. <laughs> it was... At the time it was made, they okay. had wires. Uh, the, the point being, uh, a Pat, that uh, there was another story about goats in which this... Uh, this this uh, uh, real estate place, for some reason, they made a couple wrong phone calls, and all these goats ended up on the roof of this building. And uh, the real estate place. What? Yeah, the realtor was uh, the realtor state was named. This guy's name, Payton Anderson, told that he was meant to pick up the animals. They'd hired somebody, but they didn't show up, and all these goats climbed onto the roof. <laughs> 
So this property was, obviously, it's kind of hard to sell a property if there's a bunch of goats on the roof. I don't know. It'd be kind of interesting. All right. Well, let's sit through this. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right. And uh, remember, it'll be over soon, everybody. Okay. <laughs> when this old barn starts getting me down <laughs> and the farm ends just too much for me to face. <laughs> I'll climb way up to the top of the house And not become an item at the marketplace Oh, on the roof, it's peaceful, I can bleat <laughs> Oh, and they can take my milk and make goat cheese Oh, let me tell you when the day is done and my nipples are sore I'll go up where mutton bothers me <laughs> Turns out mutton's the I'm sorry Get far away from know. those smelly old pigs <laughs> Who haven't figured out their bacon And it's a tasty treat on the roof I don't have to chew the weeds or stand there while Farmer John takes care of his knees. Oh, no. Behind me, <laughs> goat on the roof. <laughs> there you go. Enjoy. Uh, enjoy yourself the rest yeah. of the day. Nice tribute to there. Uh, Just wanted to get the real goat audio in there so you could... So you could hear it. Mm -hmm. that, may I hear it again? I'd, I'd like to... Uh, okay. Oh, again. You're going to play this again, huh? I'd like... Meh, meh. Does it go? Meh. Yeah, that's right. I'm a goat. Meh, meh. Josh Arnold is an ass. What the heck? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, just, that's disturbing. <laughs> that, I can't believe he said that. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, we need to move on. Really? Uh, we're going to talk with Bert Kreischer in a few minutes. What have you got going, Christy? Uh, let's see. A new trend on TikTok has people taking so-called everything showers. What does that mean? <gasps> well, thank you for asking, Josh. <laughs> According to CNN, the everything shower means an indulgent approach to bathing. It incorporates various different self-care treatments in one very long shower. Mm -hmm. huh. That's right. Licensed esthetician Haley Wood explained the everything shower is not just making sure you're fully groomed, but rather a reset to the mind, body, spirit. Oh, there you the go. Everything yeah. shower can be as lengthy as one chooses and include as many self care steps as one wishes, like pre washes. I guess that would be hair treatments, lip masks, foot scrubs, exfoliating, shaving, hair masks. And don't forget your post-shower treatments, blowouts, hair oils, serums, moisturizing, etc. Dicey. Etc. Now, I'm et assuming, Josh, for you and everything shower, <laughs> like a, a yank and a scrub. You forgot the pizza. <laughs> you monster. <laughs> you forgot the pizza. I like to think I'm one of your best friends. <laughs> chomp, 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 chomp. So do you eat the pizza before or after the show? Or do you, do you take a break? <laughs> Lay some towels down. Oh. Towels down. And I sit. I have a picnic outside my shower. Oh, <laughs> I love a long shower. Oh, oh my, yeah, you? but you don't do anything in the shower. I mean, you don't exfoliate or shave no. or... You just take your time. Hair so treatments or... Washcloth, some baby shampoo. Yeah, Tom, I don't remember. Do you brush your teeth in the shower? Uh, rarely. Okay. For the most part. No. Oh, I do. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you keep your toothbrush in there? No, I have it on the <clears throat> on the uh, bathroom sink, but I take it in there with me and then it has a no. little... A no, little, no. little shelf I put it on while I'm washing and then I take it off, put it back on the... I don't believe you. I Shelf? think you keep it in the shower. Because why Why do that extra work? Yeah. Hey, I've got a question. Yeah. How much longer is he going to be on the show? <laughs> I mean, he's made me mad. He's made Dean mad. How did I make you mad? Just now. Am I calling you a liar? That's right. <laughs> For no reason. Wait till I lie. I'll give you the high sign. I'm lying. <laughs> Did you ever have an everything bagel during an everything shower? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, we're going to come back. <laughs> okay. We're going to come back with Bert Greischer, see what he's up to. Yeah. The machine. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Got a comment? Our email is Bob and Tom.
Hey, Bobby Tom, this is the Static Shack. This is a real recording studio. All this stuff is paid for, and this is basically where bands come in, record their tapes, so that they can play their tapes on the radio and stuff. I could have had a recording studio. It's nice, too, but I've got a boat instead. And my band's coming here. What? Can I get some help, man? Dusty, I'm the lead singer. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of busy, plus I'm taking my break now. If, if you need help, I'll get a girl to join the band. Basically, you have to have an audition couch in a studio. It's state law. That way, anybody that comes in knows that they're trying out, knows it's going to be a fair chance. I'm basically auditioning backup singers right now. Just call my pager. Pretty sure we can make it happen. I swear to God, we can. This is my favorite part of the recording studio. Not every band has this. We got Goge Sloggers. Look at that Goge Sloggers. We got Funyuns and we got Jaggers. It's the lead singer salad bar. I love Goge Sloggers. Goge Sloggers is basically the only liquor invented that looks like it has goldfish turds floating around. But the fact remains, that's 14 karat goad. When you drink all of this, you can crap a promise ring. Bobby Tom, this is called the Control Panel Console Operation Board. I probably know more about this stuff than anybody I know of. Me and Angel Skinner did it on here once. I swear to God we did. We had to stop, though, because her butt kept getting feedback. <laughs> The pizza barn have no idea. Let's get get this hard. Eighty dollar tab, try to split it four ways, but that don't work when the drummer never pays. Scotty got the pizza boner, bought the beer, then our waitress says, "Are we finished here?" Let me put the tip in, cause you're so hot. Let me put the tip in. I swear to God, let me put the tip in. I love your hair. Let me put the tip in. It's only fair. I swear to God, I'm the best tipper. I lay it right here on the table to frame it. Long, dark hair hanging down her back. I asked for days, causing a pork attack. So fire ass hot, she should be on stage. A meat lover's dream, making me my way. Let me put the tip in. I swear to God, let me put the tip in. Check out this one. Hey, that's only 10%, baby. Look, you want to see a little more? There's 20% right in your face. I swear to God, you have to accept my tip. It's state law. Oh, and I know how to set the mood, baby. How about a guitar solo? No, not the whole thing. Just the tip. Scotty Winkler! <laughs> Swear to God, let me put the tip in. Give me the nod. Let me put the tip in. Just try your card. Let me put the tip in. Of the salad bar. Let me put the tip in, baby. You'll always come out ahead. I swear to God, you will. Highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Bob and Tom. If you irradiate poop, it will be sterile, but it's still poop. You can pick your morning radio show, but you can't wipe Bob and Tom on the couch. Do you remember the dramatic rescue of baby Jessica when she fell down the well? Remember she was yeah. 18 months old? Yeah. Believe it or not, baby Jessica is a baby no longer. She was married over the weekend. No kidding. She is now 19 years old, and she apparently tied the knot Saturday to rural church outside Midland, Texas. Hmm. She's 19. Her husband, 32-year-old Daniel Morales. I bet they're on city walk. <laughs> <laughs> Chick, I forgive you for everything you've ever done. <laughs> Bravo, yeah. Chick McGee. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, only another 12 years. <laughs> Till the next one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Baby Jessica. <laughs> 
You're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. Don't, 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 don't. Essential Morning Radio. Don't. This is Bob and Tom 24 7. 24 7. Comedian Dwight Slade. I think they're overdoing the ID for liquor. We ID under 65. Bring your walker. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got carded the other day, and it's like, look into my eyes. You ever seen a 21-year-old with this much hate and bitterness <laughs> in your eyes? <laughs> Yeah. Let's not count the birthdays. Let's count the dark angels. Uh, oh, the people you. who think and cluck at the same time. <laughs> how, how does that work? You ask them a question. You go, hey, are we doing dinner tomorrow? Dinner tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, an aborigine? Answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to dinner. You're hunting for Coke bottles. Let's go. <laughs> so this. Christine Stedman. Morning. Now, you're a mom? Well, a mom and a grandma. I think you know that. I know. She's, she's, I'm a grandpa. So this is how this Are works. You? Yep. She's been married 27 years and still a virgin. Tom. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, 28. I have a, I have Sorry. a lot of grandkids. My daughter keeps having babies. Has one almost every year. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah. She called me the other day. She goes, "Mom, guess what? I'm pregnant again. There must be something in the air." I'm like, "Yeah, you're late." <laughs> <laughs> but seriously. Hello. <laughs> Bang. Hey, hello. Sing. <laughs> I'm getting her fixed. Like, you can't get a regular <laughs> cheeseburger in L.A. Like, if you get a cheeseburger at a restaurant in L.A., it's always a burger that was happily raised right. by the owner's barber, Jeff, <laughs> spelled G-E-O-F. Of course, F. yeah. I just want a cheeseburger. I want a burger made from a cow <laughs> that was born and raised to be a burger. <laughs> All right? I don't want a burger with dreams or hope. <laughs> I want a burger that knew the deal. And I want a cheese that is 40% plastic. <laughs> All right? I want a cheese that when I poop it out, I poop out a keychain. <laughs> hey, this is Frank Caliendo, and you're listening. Thank you very much, Christy Lee. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Howdy. There's Pat Godwin. Hey, Chick. Hey, there's Josh Arnold. Hello. There's Ace Cosby. Howdy. There's Willie Griswold. Yo, yo. I'm Chick McGee, waiting for Ace to moon Pat Godwin. I don't, is that going to happen? Uh, but right now, um, okay. we're going to uh, up the handsome factor in this building by checking out <laughs> oh Bert <my>. Kreischer. <laughs> oh, my uh, I don't know geez. if he's going to moon us. I look jacked. Uh, <laughs> the shirtless Bert Kreischer. Are you in a hotel room? Yeah, in Miami. <clears throat> oh, nice. Well, that's a nice m microphone you got there. <laughs> Uh, I travel. I travel first class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, Bert, I want to get right to it here. A couple things going on, and I, I know you're touring, but your movie, The Machine, uh, it's my understanding it's going to be exclusively in theaters coming up on Friday, the 26th of May. Am I getting this right? Memorial Day weekend. We are in theaters. Memorial Day weekend. You can get your tickets at themachine.movie to pre-get your tickets. I'm going to be doing a live uh, stream into the theaters from the red carpet. On the 25th, it's going to be a blast. I'm really excited. I want to bring back comedies. I want it's a it's a it's a it's a reimagining of my story, the machine, when I got involved with the Russian mafia when I was 22, and uh, and uh, it's an action comedy. I, I think it's it's hilarious. It's fun, and I think people I think people are going to really love it. So let's get to the movies. Yes, a friend of mine um, uh, who is not especially familiar with your work wrote me a letter. Recently, and he goes, "Hey, I, I was watching this uh, this uh, this great comedian, Bert Kreischer, telling the story. That would make a great movie." And I wrote him back, and I said, "Hey, guess what? <laughs> you, 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 good timing, because it's about to come out." Yeah, yeah, I can't believe it. I mean, I, I, it's a story I've been telling forever, and we made it into a movie. Mark Hamill plays my dad. Jimmy Tatro plays younger me, and uh, and the theme is me and my dad get kidnapped by the Russian mafia and taken back to Russia to atone for the crimes of my past. So it's a blast, man. I, it's it's been cool. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger hit me up and wanted to work out, and he was like, "I I want you're the next action star. That's so great." <laughs> you like this. Are you gonna do it? Are you gonna work out with Arnold? I worked out with him. Oh, I worked you did? out with him. We lifted weights. <laughs> yeah, we had a blast. <laughs> Went to Gold's Gym in Venice Beach. He is. I realized having out with Arnold Schwarzenegger, I don't want to be an actor. I want to be a movie star. Mm -hmm. I want to wow. be. A movie star. I'm talking floor seats at the Lakers games, <laughs> joining Scientology, riding around on a motorcycle with no shirt and a cigar, playing the harmonica at bars. I want to be a movie star. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, Bert, can you recreate uh, what you said when they said uh, Mark Hamill's going to play your dad in the movie? <laughs> 
<laughs> what did I say? Yeah, no. Were you just like over over the moon, excited? That you couldn't believe oh, it. Oh, 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 they were. They they said um, we were on a Zoom call. And Mary Parrott, the head of the studio, was like, <clears throat> was like, I know who's going to play your father. And I was like, you do? <laughs> she goes, it's Mark Hamill. You have a Zoom set up at three. I hope you guys enjoy each other. And then I got on the Zoom with him, and the first thing he said is. Why don't you wear a shirt? <laughs> wear like a nice Brooks Brothers blazer, maybe. Mm -hmm. Shecky Green wears a shirt. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Shecky uh, Green. Uh, Shecky Green. Green. The movie is called The Machine. And it will be in uh, in movie theaters exclusively. If I'm getting, if I'm understanding this correctly, what I'm unclear on, Bert, is the um, red carpet thing. Is that where does is that going to be part of a theatrical feed? No, it's gonna it's gonna stream. We're gonna stream from the red carpet on the 25th into movie theaters. So for the first 30 minutes before the movie starts, you'll be on the red carpet. Oh. So we're trying we're trying to share the red carpet experience. Cool. And I'm, and I told them I was like. Roll out the red carpet. I want a big movie premiere. We got axe throwing. We got that punching machine. We're gonna have. We're gonna. It's gonna be like waste management. Fans throwing beers at celebrities. It's gonna be a blast. Oh, that right. sounds, sounds great. For more information, you can go to Bert 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 dot com, and Bert Kreischer is a B E R T Bert. So Bert Bert yeah. Bert dot com for all the information. Also, you are still going out on tour. So uh, lots of spots uh, coming up uh, in the uh, in the summer for Bert Kreischer live. It looks like your next, fully loaded. Yeah, your next gig. It looks like you're going to be doing something the Tuesday before the movie release in Austin, Texas, uh, doing oh, a couple yeah. of shows, and uh, you'll be in Flushing, New York, on Wednesday, June 14th. Lots of other stops: Baltimore, Scranton. You're going to be in New Hampshire, Fort Wayne, Indiana, on the 23rd of June. St. Louis, Lincoln, Nebraska. A lot of places where we're on the air so uh check out bert's schedule once again it's bert 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 dot com now yeah, and those are those are all fully loaded dates so that's me shane gillis mark norman tiffany haddish uh dave attell lewis black uh it's it's a packed lineup jay wow. jay Oakerson, dan soder it's rosebud baker it's like 15 of the best comics uh, and, and when I take them on the road and we just do outdoor baseball baseball uh stadiums and arenas Wow, that's Man. a huge lineup. How long is the show typically? Uh, roughly about three hours. Wow. And so we'll have four comics go on. We'll do an intermission, and then another four comics go on. We have a DJ. We have uh, the doors open at like five. It's a blast. It's just something fun to do in the summer. Fun. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds, it sounds great. Uh, once again, Burt Kreischer's new movie. I want to make sure we get this clear. The, the premiere with the whole feed of the red carpet will be the Friday of Memorial Day weekend, which is the 26th. And then it's also... I think it's on, is it on the 26th or the 25th? I, uh, Friday's been saying 25th. That's uh, a Thursday. I, Thursday. I think it's... We, we, I think the premiere is Thursday. I'm not... I think. Yeah. I'm doing Rogan on Wednesday and then coming back for the premiere on Thursday. Yeah. I don't know. Go to the machine.movie. All the info's there. <laughs> yeah, you can they, find it there. Okay, the, our, our uh, cue sheet says the 26th. So okay, I'll... well, go on the 26th also, guys. Also go on the 27th <laughs> and the 28th. <laughs> Let's make this movie. Yeah. I said, they said, how much, move, How much? what's the success for you of this movie? I said, $152 million <laughs> opening weekend. And they were like, you're aware that uh, <laughs> Top Gun Maverick made 130. And I was like, wow, it's going to do better than Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, what's new in your life? What else are you doing this summer besides working and getting on stage? Dude, working, 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 working. That's all <laughs> I do. That is all I do. I just sold a TV show to Netflix. I haven't announced it yet, but uh, so I got that coming up, and uh, and I'm trying to I'm trying to take some time off to quit drinking for like a, a minute. <laughs> I'd love to not be on the road. I'm, I'm going to do drink champs in Miami in a little bit. We were at the Red Bulls game and I stormed the shirt, the field shirtless and gotten some FSN interview. I mean, I'm, I'm like, I'm living my best life, but I need it to slow down so I can continue living it. Ah. <laughs> yeah. I, I had that discussion with Dave Attell about, I don't know, 20 years ago. Remember when Dave was doing that show where he'd Get yeah. off stage, and everyone would bring him a shot, and it, it, he he felt rude turning him down, and it almost killed him. Well, I walked on the airplane, so I have this speech that went viral, I guess, about never quitting drinking, and uh, 
And in the speech, I said, the best feeling in the world is you know, when you get on a plane and the, the flight attendant's like, can I get you something to drink? And you're like, uh, double jack on the rocks, lots of rocks. I got on the plane yesterday, and the flight attendant, as I walked on the plane, had a double jack on the rocks, lots of rocks waiting for me. And I was like, I wasn't going to drink. <laughs> <laughs> it's that movie star thing they know. Yeah. Okay, Dude, Bert, uh, Bert. Let me be a movie star. I'll go down in a blaze of glory. <laughs> uh, Bert Kreischer is our guest. Bert, according to this, it says the machine is scheduled to be released on May 26th by Screen Gems. So, All right. Uh, according you, to, you know the information. I don't. Okay. Then according well, to my calendar, that is a Friday. Are we getting this right, Christian? Okay. Yeah, but a lot of times, I'm not going to, I don't want to. Well, a lot of times they'll bring out movies on the night before, too, so that the Thursday night before they'll Happens do one. all the time. Yeah, one showing. So maybe that's the red carpet on the 25th that he's talking about. I say go to the machine.movie, get all the yeah. info. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Right. Just go to the movies. Go to the movie. Hey, even if you don't want to go to the movie, just buy a ticket and don't go. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, I really believe that if this movie does well, it will open the floodgates to all the comics to start making movies. All the comics will then be able to start making movies because that's how Hollywood works. So support live comedy. If you bought a live comedy ticket for any comic in the past year, support live comedy and go see this movie. And I'm telling you right now, it'll be it, you'll, next thing you know, Tim Dillon will have a movie. Chad Daniels will have a movie. Mm. Uh, Greg Warren will have a movie. Everyone's going to start having movies. <laughs> By the way, I, I just saw... I just saw the poster. What a surprise. You're shirtless. <laughs> no, you know, it's so funny. They took my hair off. They took the hair off me originally. And I was oh. like, why would you do that? And they go, it sells better. And I was like, uh, I look like an otter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bert, give me the, uh, for those that are not familiar with your story, can you do the 30-second version of the machine? When I was 22, I got involved with the Russian mafia. I signed up for a Russian class but didn't learn Russian. And I took four semesters of it. Then we went to Russia where they, it was so dangerous at the time, they gave us uh, banditis, little mobsters to like, we paid off the mafia to keep us safe. The original ones I met were good. We did everything. We stole a boat. We ran a pool hall scam. <laughs> they, they were nice guys. And then we took a train trip to Moscow and we got a different mob on the, on the train. And these guys were a little more rough around the edges. I mean... The first thing we did was rob the bar cart. <laughs> then my teacher came to, to to chastise me. They spit vodka in her face. Then we robbed the entire bar, the <laughs> entire train, and my class, and me. <laughs> and then we got to Moscow, and the cops were waiting for us. And uh, I walked up to the cop thinking, this is how I'm going to spend my second year in my second junior year in college in the gulag. And he gets in my face in front of my class, who's upset, next to the gangster, who I robbed the train with. And the cop's like, so I understand you're the machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the 30-second person. That's my elevator pitch. That's great. Thank you, Okay, Birch. I found out the information, so we don't have any. It is on Thursday night, 8 o'clock, live experience with Burt Kreischer in the machine, the movie. So you can go to your local theaters and try to get tickets for that. Yeah. All right. All right. Got it down. Thank yep. you very much. Thanks, Burt. Put a shirt I on. I love you guys. We love you, Bert. I, thank you. I'm going to put much. pants on. Watch. Wait. Be careful when I stand up. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. Thank you, Bert. Thank Kreischer. you, Bert. Love you guys. Uh, okay. Um, well, that was exciting. I can't yeah. wait to see the movie. Okay. Now, um, uh, uh, this portion of the Bomb and Tom show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Uh, better help is about helping yourself. You can't help everybody else until you've helped yourself. That's where therapy comes in, and better help is designed to link you with a therapist and not just link you with a therapist uh, via the uh, via the great world of the Internet, but to uh, have your therapy conducted uh, through the Internet. So what we're talking about here is uh, balancing out your life, getting some help, talking to a licensed therapist on a journey of self-discovery. And because it is done entirely online, Line, it is extra convenient, so it's designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. The way it works is you fill out a brief questionnaire. You will get matched with a licensed therapist. By the way, you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. And uh, this is all about getting some balance in your life. Better help 
it's not a bad thing to be helped. Visit BetterHelp.com slash BT Show today to knock 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, uh, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash BT Show. And the Bob and Tom Show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Coming up, we're going to head back to the news desk with Christy Lee. Mm -hmm. Some very interesting stuff coming up, including the Loch Ness Monster and uh, the important science of how many farts does it take to fill a balloon. <laughs> this is the Bob and Tom Show. This is Bob. Originally from Duluth. Originally from Duluth. And you made the. Uh, how did you make the transfer into the, the transition into stand-up comedy? Did you have regular jobs? Well, I yeah, I worked as a secretary, and I missed that. I missed the camaraderie because you don't always get to see people on the road as a comedian. So yeah, I miss that. Uh, where do you want to go for lunch? What do you want to get for lunch? Where do you want to go for lunch? <laughs> I get like a sandwich, some <laughs> or like a salad. <gasps> oh, <laughs> I mean, maybe we could just a place I like, get like a diet coke. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we could go to Queen. <laughs> yes, we could. Yes, we could. I like the drama, you know, like, uh -huh. don't touch Don Donna's label maker. <laughs> okay. No, don't. Don't even look at it. Why? Because she bought it with her own money. Oh. oh enough said, sister. Uh -huh. Why don't you tell Donna to keep her mitts off my freaking tape dispenser, which she should know is mine because it's clearly label... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting mad. Who stole my key lime pie yo play? It wasn't me. <laughs> Did you eat my Southwestern style lean cuisine? No. Did you eat my half chocolate rabbit I've been gnawing on for five years? It's basically only half a head and an ear with a soft baby blue ribbon wrapped around it because my ma gave it to me for Easter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't. Oh. It took you too long. I had to scrabble it up in my chops. <laughs> um, but yeah, I used to work as a secretary for a long time. Yes, you've been around. Yeah, I've been around. And I used to work as a Star Trek character in a touring show. I, was, I did a Star Trek character. Oh, we really? What? Mall, Wait a mall <laughs> openings and uh, Jack in the Box promotions around the country. Which, which uh, what Star character? Trek? Well, I was a Bajoran, uh, which is from Deep Space Nine. Not many people. Oh, Greetings. I'm Major Lilanka, the planet Bajor. Get the F away from me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was most of my job. What is the, what is the name All of the, right. uh, the tribe, the people? Uh, the Bajorans. So they're Armenians. Bajorans. We were most, we were <laughs> like uh, the Jews of your World War Two. <laughs> <laughs> we were decimated by the Kardashians, which are... And the Kardashians lizard, definitely are media. Yeah, yeah they are. Yeah. <laughs> They're lizard-like people. <laughs> and all I have left of my parents to remember them by is this bloody paper doll. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a napkin with some ketchup on it from this food court. Oh, so you are a denier of the Holocaust. <laughs> I see. <laughs> well, why don't you wait for your wife to come back from the, t the Chico's where she's buying a boxy jacket? <laughs> Maria Bamford is our guest. <laughs> This paper doll. Oh. Did you? Did well, you, I haven't seen Chick look like that. In a while. That's good. Did you ever? Uh, did you ever work at a theme park as a I, I, character we, or anything? They uh, they trained us at a theme park, and it was mostly it was uh, in North Carolina, so it was quite it was a very like it was a place where people wore a lot of religious kind of rock star T-shirts, where they'd right. go like, "Come follow Christ, he's going to be seen at the mega," you know, like yeah, that right. kind of uh -huh. thing. So we, we yeah, I did a little work there, but I'm not very good at talking to strangers, you mm -hmm. know, trying to get people interested in talking to me. I just, oh, it was just terrible. It was mostly that, like, greetings. You got makeup all over your face. Uh, you mean my genetic makeup? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very different from you. <laughs> uh, I'm an no. I wish the Vulcans would come back from their smoke break. <laughs> Did you needed for romance was a van and some chloroform. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes! What happened to those days? Essential morning radio. All day and all night. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. Mark Maron is our guest. He's part of the Stand Up Eddie Tour. I went to see a show a couple weeks ago. Great comedian. Uh-huh. Went to see the show and in the second row 
there was a, a bachelorette party, oh. and I'm, I and I'd never the seen worst. I'd never seen this before. <laughs> But a woman, you've, you, you've Mark seen, got mad. you've seen no, the, you've I've seen the seen arrow it. through the head thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. God is my witness. Dildo. Oh yeah. Of course. Dildo. Huge course. dildo yeah. through the head. Anatomically correct. Going sideways or forward and back? Uh, going sideways. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Left on the entire show, including when she went up to use the facility. Ah. Uh, and of course, always funny. The Hard to get through a revolving door. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah. 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 So, uh, see, Barack doesn't have to put up with it. He doesn't. I wish I didn't. I don't understand it. It's like, you, you, do you know who I am? You got two bachelorette parties. You have nowhere else to go than to watch an angry Jew work through his pain. This is what a good. You know that your, your your future husband is across town watching a Vietnamese transvestite pop a ping pong ball out of whatever it is she has down there. Probably getting a disease by proximity, and you're here watching me work out my problems with my mother. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> that is a hell of an act. That is an act. Hey, man, it's Donnie Baker. Hey, Donnie. Hey, I heard you guys talking about that man with 13 inches of pork. Yeah, yeah. 13 and a half. It's crazy. You guys know Jamie Vickers? You know drummer for Velvet Donger? No. no. <laughs> he was uncut, too, and he could hide just about anything. Really? Did that affect the taste, Donnie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Good morning. morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom 20. I think we finally figured it out. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. There's Christy Lee at the news desk. Hi, Chick. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Hi. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. Willie Griswold. Hey, hey. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom. Just talked to Bert Kreischer, and uh, Christy did uh, our homework live on the air. Um, it looks like uh, Burt's movie is going to officially have the uh, sort of sneak preview with the red carpet thing Thursday, May 25th. At 9 p.m. Eastern time. In select theaters. In select theaters, yes. And it opens on a regular basis everywhere May 26th. Correct. Right. You'll see Burt shirtless in Russia. Which is what Burt said right at the start of our interview. No. Yep. Yeah. 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 And then you... I'm pretty sure the first words out of his mouth you'd like to go in and listen to him. Were what? That that was what was happening. Select theaters the 25th, and the show opens the 26th. I that. I was just reading from the publicity sheet they sent that's incorrect. Sorry. Uh, now, uh, well, what have you got, Christy? Thing. Hey, a man says he has estimated how many farts it would take to fill a balloon. I'm sure everybody was uh, worrying about this. Okay. Mr. Kyle Mann, Josh, sought to determine how much gas would needed would be needed to inflate the average balloon, which has a uh, volume of approximately 7.9 liters. You almost said baloney. I did. <laughs> Mann wrote, the volume of gas expelled in a single fart can vary widely, but... On average, a single fart might release about 50 to 150 milliliters of gas. Man was able to calculate that it would take about 79 farts to fill up a standard 11-inch 11, 11 party balloon. So let me get this straight. This is a math problem. He didn't actually do it. Well, I think we all know that uh, in science, you... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is his hypothesis, yes. Right. yes this is, thanks. See, this would have been a fun story for maybe my high school class to work out. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, instead of the boring math problems that <laughs> yes, you have. Yes, yes. yes. Give this us something like this. Yeah. Instead of if Susie's on a train from London and Derek's on a train from Southampton. Yeah, give right. me the fart question. How many times are they going to fart? Willie goes to Laha, has two burritos, <laughs> and Josh Man, drinks great seven burritos. buds. They're great burritos. Oh. Those, are, those are very good. Uh, and Mr. Man Clash. I'm sorry. Restaurants oh, yeah. called La Hacienda. It's very weird. No, La God, is, is, couldn't it be more regional? That's one block away. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so you're saying, you're saying it's in this region. Yeah, I am, yeah. Yeah, and La ha is a very... Okay, thank you. Sorry. Mr. Mann cautioned that his calculations offer a rough estimate, as the volume of gas expelled in a single fart can vary widely between individuals and situations. Well, certainly can, yes. yeah. Now, who do you think has a larger volume of air coming out of them? Me, Willie, Josh, or Christy? Well, it varies also by what the fart itself. It, and not no, every fart is... Oddly enough, Christy can bring a house down. Oh, yeah. Really? Way more. Oh, yeah. Way more farts. You would be surprised. Now, would yeah. a shark throw off the whole <laughs> thing with the mo yeah. moisture inside the balloon? Yeah, like a water balloon at that point. Is it less flammable then? <laughs> Don't get it near the Bunsen burner. Has anyone ever done that? Oh. Was that like a, a jackass stunt? 
or like uh, right after they went from boiling, did they go from boiling oil to balloons filled with crap? And then, <laughs> <laughs> you think, man, Ugh. that would have been Ugh, awful, that's right? right. That'd stop me from breaking into your house. You throw a balloon full of crap at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sure yeah. would. Absolutely. Well, an interesting experiment, certainly. Yeah. Uh, thank you for enlightening us. <laughs> a man who has dedicated his life not to figuring out the gas in a balloon, but... Solving the mystery of the Loch Ness Monster says he thought this job would be easier. According to the BBC, Steve Feltman gave up his career, sold his home in Dorset to move to the Loch in 1991. Yeah, to do very important work. Well, now after more than 30 years of searching for Nessie, oh, things apparently have not panned out as he this, had expected. This well, all of a sudden got real <laughs> sad. Nessie's more elusive than one would think. He told the BBC, quote, I did think this job was going to be easier as I years. had a sighting in the first year and thought it wouldn't be long until a second sighting would come along. Well, Feltham added, and that is where I'm stopped at the moment, still waiting for that second glimpse of something unexplained. I think this is the same uh, speech Dan Marino gave after, <laughs> after his first and only... Super Bowl. Well, I'll be back soon. <laughs> no. 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 I've seen an, an interview with this guy uh -huh. before, and he really does look. He's like, you know, I don't <laughs> don't really know how much longer I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> he is, like, done. Does he go out every day looking? He lives right on the A water. Lot. Yeah. Yeah. So he gets up and gets the glasses. The so he can see. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Whoa. Just sits there all day long staring at the Debunk, water. Usually, yeah, just kind of debunking... Uh, like, oh, no, no. Would it be like a mirage after a certain point? Exactly. You, would, uh, you think you saw it, or um, maybe it's like that the cartoon where the frog is singing. Yeah. <laughs> Every time this guy, <laughs> this guy turns to his left, and there it goes. the monster comes up. Now, see, now, see, now, see. Oh. Feltham's, Feltham's dedication to his search saw him named Ambassador of the Year at the 2016 Islands and Islands Tourism Award. Sure, sure, sure. That's the thing. It's, Tourism, <laughs> that's the key there. Not, there's no scientists talking about it. And he it. previously, um, Chick, I'm sorry, this is kind of stepping on your Go territory, ahead. has been recognized by the Guinness Book of World Record for the longest continuous vigil hunting for the Loch Ness Monster. There you go. Sad, yeah. sad man. No, no, no. He was uh, heroic in a way. I bet he doesn't have a wife. Well, <laughs> you make certain sacrifices in the name of science. I, <laughs> I bet you he has the most elaborate... Um, just <laughs> machines for self-pleasure you've ever seen in your life. Yes, so that he can still hold the binoculars. Yes. Oh, yeah. Are these homemade, or is he ordering them from, like, oh, Germany, say? Yeah, baby. I would th I would think they'd be homemade. He seems rather oh, industrious. Sure. Oh, no, yeah. the, the, the Germans have those lenses down. Come on. Oh, yeah, they're nothing they're like the a best. German lens. You're right. You're right. Uh, well, I thought you were talking about the sex machines. Yeah, me too. Yeah, who's paying I, this guy? I have no idea. I mean, that sort of work, Tom, uh, sort of, uh, the reward is uh, non-financial. That's right. It's, uh, <laughs> Maybe he applies for a grant every year. I mean, he's he's got, richer than all of us, I'll tell you. I mean, he's got a <laughs> lakefront property in Loch Ness. I assume it's pretty sure, pricey. Sure. Yeah, he's, he's doing fine. Okay. Well. His spirit is rich. That's right. It? Okay, very That's right. Right. Actually, no, the spirit is just married to a man named oh, right. I, I get right. the confusion. I'm sorry. Right. Now, isn't there a TV show called Finding Bigfoot? There is, mm -hmm. yeah. It's been on for many, many seasons. Right. And, and they've never found Bigfoot? Oh. That's the title. It's, they're in the act of finding it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's been on for a long time, too. You'd think by now they would have found something. They have got many, a lot of compelling evidence has come out of that show. They have a body of one? They have a body. They don't actually have a body, but we don't know the decomp rate of a, of a Sasquatch. Sure we do. It, 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 no, you don't. It'd be the same as almost every other animal. No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. He, he's right. right. Yep. How often are you in the woods and come across a decomposing deer? You don't. You don't. Not very often at all. Or a bear. So imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So Okay. A lot of animals <laughs> out there doing See, work. here's the thing. They, they should uh, have two different... Uh, prove, prove it to normal people, and then you have to prove it to Tom. <laughs> <laughs> It's a whole different, it's a whole different thing. You're looking at a whole, right. a whole new ball of wax here. Okay. All those hunters out there, here no we ever go. shot one. Yeah, there we go. Uh, well, first off, we don't know what sort of uh, interspecies war would would uh, would start if one were to shoot a Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they're all coming out. From you know, armed? Uh, do you know a hunter they're... that shot a zebra or uh, or an elephant or anything like sure. that? No, I mean just like you are presenting. They were just walking around and shot one. Is what you're. 
with the Bigfoot. <laughs> that's what you said. <laughs> just walking around, all these hunters, that's right. what you said. You're out there looking for whatever you're looking for. If there's somebody these Bigfoot up, Bigfoots, or is it Big Feet? <laughs> big Feet. <laughs> it's, big, it's Big Feet. I thought it was Big's Feet, like Surgeon's General. Uh, oh, <laughs> Big's. There's, there's the literary. Maybe you're right. I'm and sorry. they wouldn't want to shoot it. They'd want to take it in alive, wouldn't they? You want to be able to study a big I'm foot. against all of that. You want to mm. just study it in its uh, natural, natural habitat, environment? Yes, okay. And leave it be. Okay. Well, let's move forward here. What else is happening? <laughs> well, police in Spain and France broke up an international smuggling ring. And they don't wear pants. Oh, uh, sorry. I hope they're wearing pants because they're smuggling eels. You know yeah. where they smuggle them, don't you? <laughs> oh, <Here> man. Go. <laughs> no. You kind of just get its no. face there, and it, no. it knows what to do. Shocking. No. It's depending on what kind of eel it is. <laughs> You're putting eels up their no. butt? He's well, uh, are they putting eels up their butt? Chick, one does not have to put an eel up. You just show, show it them? the butt, the and eel it knows. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> And once it hits your intestines, that's just second nature for it. It's just swerving around. Uh, it looks Pat, like it Pat, come wait. out your throat. At Pat, do you, do you, have you learned about? Wait a minute, who is that? Who's in there? That's me, Luigi Accusatore. Hey, hey, Luigi. Everybody, bonjour. I haven't even finished the story. Yet. I know you haven't. I couldn't believe they went to me so quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you mind listening to the rest? I will. I'll sit right here. I'll be ready oh, to you, sing when you when you can have. Yeah, me. you listen with us, <laughs> okay. Luigi. Officers arrested 27 people, seized 1.6 tons of live baby eels, as well as goods worth over 2.1 million dollars in the operation. Oh, yeah. Officers also recovered tons of frozen baby eels called elvers, a critically endangered species that are prized as a delicacy in Spain's and Spain and parts of Asia. That's an occasional crossword elvers? thing. El yes, I've gotten it a couple times. The eels, which officials said had not been subject to any food safety checks and were not suitable for human consumption, were destined for China. Hmm. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. They, they're known for eating things that aren't fit for human consumption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Elver. test tubes and labs. <laughs> oh, sorry. And bats. Mm. More bat? Uh, you gotta I, help, you gotta I help these guys in the import and export of business to oh. sell these eels, so I know what I talk about. Ah. And I, I like to sing for you now. Okay. Please. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and you make a sweet deal selling live baby eels. That's amore. <laughs> They're a delicacy and an endangered species. She. That's amore. <laughs> Registers ring, ching, 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 make it a cash. Eels are bringing a mucha bella. Customs caught me, now in prison, like Sorvino in a good fella. <laughs> Sorvino. <laughs> See you later, everybody. Hey. Yeah, is your girlfriend with you? Gina Statutori is always by my side. Okay. She's yeah. the love of my Gina. life. Always by my side. Happy her. birthday, Gina. Oh, I see she got the braces off. <laughs> <laughs> On her legs, she can walk now, yes. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Christy Lee is at the Bob and Tom News Desk. Have we missed anything? Thousands of people in New Hampshire lost power in a widespread outage that was caused by a raccoon. The what? outage was caused by a raccoon. 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 I like it. <laughs> raccoon. Rocky raccoon. A raccoon that made contact in a substation. WMUR. Crews were able to eventually restore power to the 2,000 impacted customers. Effective. No word on the Effective. fate of Effective. the raccoon. Yeah, I'm wow. thinking impact. it's uh, when they said it made contact. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. believe they mean toast. Mm -hmm. yeah, was, yeah, that's how they know it was a raccoon. Because its fried oh. carcass was still there. Exactly. They wouldn't know if it just walked away. Could have been anything. Man. Ugh. Okay. Yikes. All right. Well, I hope everybody got their power back. And uh, the blame, blame the raccoon. What else you got? Social Security Administration has released its annual list of the top baby names for the year 2022. How about they release my money and give it back to me so I can invest it wisely? <laughs> was that asking too much? I guess so. Yeah. That okay. is... Last year marked Liam's six straight years, the number one name for boys, while Olivia has reigned since the name unseated Emma four years ago. The big O. Yeah, Emma is still second choice for girls, followed by Charlotte, while Noah and Oliver were second and third on the list for boys. Hmm. Here you go. Oh, it looks like Harper's been booted off and Luna is in. The top ten list for girls, Olivia, Emma, Charlotte... Amelia, Sophia. Is this starting one uh, or starting one through ten? ten? Sorry. Please, please be more specific. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> well, since I'd already mentioned Olivia, Emma, no, no, and no Charlotte, excuse. I no, think no, you knew. It was actually quite clear, Josh. Was <laughs> Jesus. Number seven, Ava. <laughs> Number eight, Mia. 
Number nine, Evelyn. And number 10, as I mentioned, Luna. Evelyn. Kicking out That's a surprise, Harper. right? That's yeah. a pretty name, though, Evelyn. Yeah. Let me tell like you, if you, don't, if you don't see a toddler, like a two- or three-year-old little girl named Evelyn, it's adorable. Yeah, that's yeah. really sweet. Night call before her, Christmas, call her Christmas Eve. Evie. Like, pretty cute. Oh. Oh. Evie, Eve, yeah. Evie, Lynn, oh. Eva. <laughs> for Eva, Eva? <laughs> the top ten know. list for boys last year starting at number one. Rock. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Liam, number two, Noah. Number three, Oliver. Four, James. Five, Elijah. Oliver's funny if the last name is Close Off. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oliver Close Off? Yeah, yeah, that's a funny name. Uh huh. Uh, William <laughs> 6, Henry 7, Lucas 8, Benjamin 9, and Theodore 10. William is 6? I thought Henry would be the 8th. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course. Hey, hang, hang on a second. Shut up, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> and Theodore is back up there. Yeah. Teddy. That's Theodore. a surprise. Names like Dutton, Casey, and Chosen are on the rise for boys. Chosen. Dutton. Chosen. I thought you were going to say Dutch. No, Dutton. Dutton. I like Dutch. Hey, Dutch. Dutton and Casey are from Yellowstone. Oh, uh, okay. Uh -huh. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. What about and Chosen? I don't know where Chosen's from. What about Chode? Is Chode, Chode on the list? Chode oh, on the list. Chode Somebody who's it? wider than he is tall. You know, mm -hmm. Chode. <laughs> Ren Lee, Naraya, and Arlet are growing more popular for girls. Arlet, handy if you're writing a poem and she's a whore. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Did you oh, she likes, Arlet? She likes, she likes red. A-R-L-E-T. No, what's Ren, Ren Lee? Ren Lee, W-R-E-N-L-E-E. -E -E. One word, Ren Lee. Ren Lee. W -R -E. What the These are my daughters, Ren Lee and Arlet. <laughs> and Chosen. Just, really? <laughs> <laughs> this is my son chosen. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, I need to leave now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <sighs> Wouldn't it be ironic if chosen became a bisexual? They can't choose. Uh, they can't decide. Because being bisexual is a choice. Is that what you say, Josh? It's a decision? <laughs> That's right. Let me ask you something. <clears throat> now that we're out here in these waters. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> what is the end game for you on this? I mean, you're, oh, he's so adorable. He's uh, drawing my attention to these problems. Or you think, I'm going to kill that guy. Which one do you think it is? Well, I, now that we know that you think bisexuality is a problem. <laughs> I, uh, I never said said that. Well, it sort of sounded think, that way. I, and I, I think you are a problem. <laughs> well, there's no denying that. <laughs> <sighs> well, that was fun. It's nice that the Social Security Administration releases these names now because that's the only thing that these kids are ever going to get from Social Security. <laughs> yeah, because exactly. there won't be any money left yeah, a, by the time they turn was to 65 or whatever it is. <laughs> right, right. got a check from the government. Oh, are you guys getting yours yet? No. Oh, I don't know how it works. I'm I gotta not, fill out. I gotta fill out forms. I haven't. Yeah, uh, okay. so, yeah you're never getting that. So uh, <laughs> this says that the number one rise in names, the one that's going up the most, is Dutton. Dutton. Dutton, Dutton is from Yellowstone. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's the ranch. Yeah, baby. the ranch. So the when, Dutton ranch. When is the baby? Did they say <laughs> Dutton, honey? <laughs> <laughs> that's a cereal, Daddy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Right? It was. Yeah. Oh, is Everybody, that, is right? That, yeah. Is that cereal gone? Uh, well, that ad campaign was... Nut and Honey. Uh, uh, 1988? Nut and honey. <laughs> yeah. That's, what, that's when Dutton's grandfather was Maybe. conceived. Yes, yes. All oh, right. Okay, thank you very much. Hey, let me tell you about my compound, where I'm going and forgetting all this. Uh-huh. I'm laying, coming over today. Laying in quiet. Oh, I'm going to help you fill out those forms. <laughs> I, I beg to differ. <laughs> it's simply safe. The design it yourself, do it yourself, home security system. Spring is in bloom, and you know what comes next. Vacation season. How would you like to be on vacation with peace of mind? That's what you get when you have Simply Safe. You stay connected from anywhere. Arm or disarm your system remotely. Check your cameras to make sure everything is okay. Simply Safe. Arrives at your door. Easy to set up yourself in about 30 minutes, or you can have Simply Safe certified technicians install it for you. With financing through a firm, secure your home today and just pay installments over time that fit your budget. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafetom.com. Go today, claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off your order with interactive monitoring. That's simplysafetom.com. Remember, there's no safe. Like Simply Safe. Thank you very much, simplysafetom.com. Coming up today in history, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Catch any part.
you lost you think you lost money in investing. My whole people lost money in investing. Bernie Madoff came along and took oh, all wow. took, set us back ten thousand years. I hate that guy so much. I hate Bernie Madoff so much. Not and not for what he did, because I don't care about the rich. I hope uh-huh. they lose their money. But no, for how he looked physically. Did he have to look so Jewish while he was doing that? He's already the image of a Jew that's in every redneck's paranoid mind's eye, just some crook nosed Jew on top of a pile of gold coins swimming in it like Scrooge McDuck. Like, ah, I'm gonna take the ten thousand money. Ah. <laughs> like, I always trip out when I see somebody that so fully embodies a stereotype like Bernie Madoff did. Like, when you see a nerd who's actually wearing a pocket protector, like, they don't even make pocket protectors anymore. <laughs> Believe me, I know. That guy had to go out and hand mold the plastic <laughs> resin in his nerdy little pocket when you're driving in traffic and somebody cuts you off and you look into the car and it is, in fact, an Asian woman. You're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you serious? Are you seriously going to be Asian right now? There are people watching you. Mm-hmm. Have a little bit of self-respect and don't be Asian. Like when I'm walking along and I see a quarter on the ground, I don't pick it up. It kills me not to. <laughs> but I don't do it because there's people watching. Me. There are people watching. Me. You don't yeah. want to reinforce the stereotype. No. That's correct. Oh, you got oh, to keep it real. Uh, uh, Moshe Kasher is our guest. I live, uh, I live in L.A. now. I live in, I started, and you live near Hollywood. I live across the street from a 99 cent store because ah. comedy makes dreams come true. Uh, yes. Yeah, they have a, they now have it. they now sell a 99 cent pregnancy test. Have you seen that? No. no. Yeah. How bad does one's life have to be? Like how far down the socioeconomic <laughs> ladder do you need to flop before the 99 cent pregnancy test seems like a viable health option? <laughs> the 99 cent pregnancy test when you kind of have to know. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought one. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh. Why not? Uh, just to see what would happen. I peed on the little stick. And? Turns out, I have hepatitis C. <laughs> <laughs> I caught it from Who the knew? test. <laughs> wow, cool. hear from her once every 17 years. <laughs> when I did finally see her, the only presents she brought me were two cases of Jolt Cola and a carton of Virginia Slim. Oh, nice. But I will say, uh, it did make me the most popular fifth grader in my class. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Bob and Tom 24-7. It's not on air. It's online. Bob and Tom 24-7. Oh, that was a good flight. Yeah, it was. Ah! Nicoterm. That's the that's the name of it. Nicoterm? Uh-huh. Well, what's that? It's a patch. It's a patch? Yeah, it's a it helps you quit smoking. My doctor gave it to me. Nicoterm's a patch? Yeah, Nicoterm is a it's a patch. A patch. <laughs> a patch. Like, Some kind of patch. <laughs> yes, it's a patch, like you put on your arm. Nicoterm is a patch? Oh, I'll be damned. <laughs> Yes! It's a patch! <laughs> Two days later, different flight, same airport. What do you mean a patch? <laughs> it's a patch. You mean like a cabbage patch? No. Like a briar patch? No. Like a patch of pirate wear? No. You mean like a patchwork quilt? No. You mean like a Clarence Carter no. patches? Why can't you understand this? It's a patch your doctor gives you that you wear on your arm. What do you mean arm? Two days later, same airport, yet another flight. Now, let me get this straight. Nicoterm is a... <laughs> Nicoterm, guaranteed to help you quit smoking. I think it's a patch. <laughs> this is Bob and Tom 24-7. Comedy, guess, Bob and Tom exclusives. And it's here on the internet. Bob and Tom 24-7. Re- uh, residents of a small Austrian community are campaigning to rename their city the equivalent of Stinksville. <laughs> Carl Verasmo, 51, who moved to Lichtenworth several years ago from Vienna, wants it renamed Lichtenworth Stinkendorf. <laughs> sure he does. I'm not making this up. I know, and I'm for it. He says local pig farmers have polluted the air 
Uh -huh. So he started collecting signatures for a petition to rename the town, trying to get the people to realize that... I like a city that lets you know what it's all about. The town mm -hmm. I'll get that. Morning, Bob and Tom Show. Yeah, good morning. Hello. Is hello. this Carl? Hi, hello. Carl. Hey, Carl, I understand that uh, you just moved to um, Lickenworth a few years ago. The one I really was pushing for, but they didn't go for. Yeah, which one was that? Uh, that's Hagenschitzen. <laughs> Hagen Sheetson, huh? Hagen Sheetson, Germany. I think this is a long eye wow. in America. It's long. I think Hagen Sheetson. Hagen Sheetson, yes. Yeah. Okay. Long eye. You know, your American pronunciation, I don't quite understand. Yeah, it's a. Right. Yeah. Christy, you must come over here sometime and visit. I think you'd love this country. I would? Oh, yeah. Well, what would uh, she love about it? Oh, some of the most beautiful cities where I, I'm sure you would like to spend a long, long vacation, a long time. Like, like where should I visit? Oh, uh, you might like uh, Slitten Licken. Slitten Licken. Slitten Licken. She's been there before, I think. Oh, have you been there? I think so. I think you'd love it. 747 flying both at New York to Seattle, mm -hmm. and the, all of the toilets on the plane stopped working. I think the funniest okay, part is... Okay, first of all, they've only gone three hours. I'm sure you can hold it for three hours, can't you? You have children, don't you? Christy, we're all full-grown adults. Yeah? You're Barbie size. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to the bathroom every hour, every half hour, a lot. You little Josh Little every... Josh has had a double dose of that in-flight chili of meal. Of course. Oh, all right, he... did you hear this? First off, <laughs> he can see, he, when I take a flight, one of the fattest things I've ever Tom done. assumes I would order the chili as if that were ever an option. <laughs> <laughs> However, and, and he said a double dose, meaning I requested seconds. <laughs> Hi, fellas, this is Floyd Tucker, the over the road trucker. You're listening to Bob and Tom. <laughs> I'm going to kill him. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. News desk, Christy Lee. Hey. Guitar, Pat Godwin. Hey, hey. Not really sure what he does. Here's Josh Arnold. Me? There's Ace Cosby. <laughs> hey. There's Willie Griswold. Sort of a locker room guy, I think. Mm. I'm what does that mean? Everybody's best friend. Is that mm -hmm. what you're yeah, what saying? People on the team. I don't do a lot on the court, but I kind of make it happen yeah. in the locker room. You're, oh, I see. Yeah. You're a locker room guy. Get people gum, shoot people up. Yeah. There's uh, I'm Chick. Here's Tom. Oh, thank you very Tommy. much. Tommy. Now, um, uh, we have our history segment coming up momentarily. <laughs> Foxes love the history segment, Tom. Mm -hmm. They think it's so funny. They, they love it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think they're waiting for the Ace Cosby that's, joke of the day. I that's think that's weird. what the Foxes Well, I know. Want. I know. I was just going to just get to that, I, as I promised. Oh, God. I want to make sure that uh, Chick was uh, <laughs> sitting thing. down so he doesn't fall over. From when, laughing, yes. When, when, Hold when, on. When, when it happens. What makes the Fox laugh? Oh. Sexy man with a deep voice. Ace Cosby, here he is with his joke of the day. What do you call a doctor that specializes in uh, Adam's apples? What? <laughs> A guy neck colleges. A guy neck colleges. Forced. Too clever for its own good. Uh, what if it's a girl? Then. Yeah, see, you can't do that. Well, women women aren't supposed to have Adam's yeah. apples. Yeah, there was that, women can operate them. When Eve ate the apple, that got us into a bunch of trouble. Yeah, so, it's all our fault. Yeah, probably Did, forget uh, that. Uh, <laughs> Did Bruce Jenner get his Adam's apple taken away? It was shaved. Yeah, I was going to say, you shaved can get down, them shaven. Probably. Isn't yeah. that crazy? That, that doesn't sound painful at all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Go on. Do his kids celebrate Mother's Day or Father's Day with him? Let's not. <laughs> I don't think that's <laughs> fair. I would think Mother's Day, I right? I would think. Okay. Wouldn't they go ahead and change it? Just ask yeah. him. Fair question. <laughs> Caitlin's got a terrific no, a... sense of humor. If Does you ever, she? yes, dude, mm -hmm. she loves. Don't dude me. I thought you know, Caitlin's got <laughs> a terrific you dare ass. Don't dare, dude. <laughs> you know, I've never looked at her ass. <laughs> you know who does have a terrific ass? Who? Ace. Ace. Yeah, he does. We never saw it today. Well, are we gonna uh, do this or not? Tomorrow. I think there's. No. We don't have time today. This We're gets, just gonna it, keep talking about it until we. There's forget some about logistical it. issues. We no, have to get. A, just get up and put small, your ass up against the window. I have a small step ladder. Yeah. I can bring tomorrow. <laughs> How What's the money up to? Structurally sound, is it? It's structurally. Like it's got, and it has How much? A tall, like, sandal you can hold on to the top. Okay. All right. Well, we'll... 700 bucks. I, I don't want him to anyone getting injured while Ace presses oh, his I'm hand. I'm bringing it. Could we have injured. the music, please? For what? <laughs> <laughs> Time now for today in history, May 15. Oh, the eagle flies today. Oh. Here's Tom. 
Anne Boleyn accused of adultery, starting the trial that would lead to her execution. Yikes. Poor Anne. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She did give head. <laughs> <laughs> At the very end, she well, gave it up. I guess we She's married that. to a tyrant. Quick way to lose nine or ten pounds, oh. huh? Oh, yeah, tyrant who put a roof over her head, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> You're a King Henry apologist oh, over there, huh? Well, I guess there's uh, there's no pleasing you. Okay. <laughs> the Vatican had it coming, that's what I say. Okay. All I know is your head's coming off because that's where the noise is coming from. <laughs> 1905, 1905, the founding of the city of Las Vegas. Ah. They have this early photographs. It's pretty impressive. It's hilarious. Yeah, like right. We're all the shack of a casino and one are, ugly yeah. hooker. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it quick. I'm real busy. <laughs> one, of these, one of these days, this is really going to be something. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, here's an obscure. There's a gunslinger's convention in town. Uh, a trivia buster. In 1928, Mickey Mouse made his first appearance in the silent film Plane Crazy. This movie was created before Steamboat Bill, Willie, but was uh, was distributed <laughs> after. Oh, no, okay. I didn't so, know that. Yeah, I didn't either. And it's wow. not Steamboat Billy. I know. I corrected myself, <laughs> Jack Gaspar. <Astro. laughs> That's a weird name to not know how to say. Steamboat Willie. Um, <laughs> yeah. All righty. The final episode. Boo, this is obscure. Did you know Mickey Mouse's real first uh, original name was... <laughs> Bubonic Bill. <laughs> and they went, oh, this is sort of tasteless. Let's go with that, yeah. <laughs> Why did he come up with a mouse? Because that the plague from 1918 was fresh and everybody... <laughs> I don't know. That was rats, wasn't it? Just yeah, well, well, well and, and some argue even the, the mites. Maybe that's rats. why he did okay. it, to make it the less hell? scary. Because mice are sweet and fun and cute. I thought mouse were just girl rats. Is that not true? <laughs> <laughs> now, you're going to tell me that mice and rats don't breed, and I say, oh, yeah, they do. Oh, gosh. Do uh, they? This city is littered with mats. <laughs> or rice. Right. Or rouses. <laughs> Here we go. This is, I didn't know this. You don't know 1990. Well, there is a lot I don't know. I don't know why, for example, we turn your microphone on. <laughs> I don't know why, for example, Ace know. hasn't climbed over that board and sat with his big ass on your big head. <laughs> and uh, where was I? Oh, George H.W. Bush took the Queen of England to a baseball game. I'd forgotten about it. What year was that? 91. It was the Orioles versus the Oakland A's. Mm -hmm. So that was so post-Naked Gun. Yeah. Because that was 88. And it wasn't really professional baseball. And you remember the famous <laughs> you, you remember the famous thing that Queen Elizabeth said? No, what'd she say? I'm not going back until they install a pitch clock. <laughs> <laughs> this is too boring. <laughs> Swing better, better, better. Swing. Uh, oh. <laughs> Now, you just mentioned the movie that they have the famous scene with the queen. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I always get them confused. It's the same. Is it the police academy guys or which group is that? Is it police the, squad. Police squad yeah. guys. And which one is the queen in? She's in naked, the Naked the Gun. Naked the gun. first okay, one. Yeah. The police squad. One. All right. Um, happy birthday, uh, uh, record producer and uh, Roxy Music guy, Brian Eno. Yeah. Famous for his work with, among others, U2. And you know his brothers, Mino and Miney Mo. <laughs> oh. You Mino, know Mino, Mino, Mino and Miney Mo. Mo. Uh, Nothing? So, so he's the one who unleashed <laughs> your toast. Brian Ferry on us. That's, uh, we I can blame him. Uh, one of the, your favorite albums, right? Avalon, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it would uh, be. Uh, do you know who this is? Chick McGee? Emmett Smith? Is we, we in your in your area there? <laughs> <laughs> Emmett Smith? I know who that is. Legendary is cowboy? player? Famous yeah, cowboy? Well, Maybe oh, everybody up, should see. shut their dirty whore mouth. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> huh? Because we mentioned a cowboy. Damn, it's uh, uh, one of the famous all time. I think all time leading rushers. The leading rusher. Yeah, I mean, so far. Yeah, no, no. Pat, you're considered a leading rusher in bed. Is that true? <laughs> yes, yes, I am indeed. <laughs> let's get, we're yeah, almost yeah. out of time let's here. Get, let's buddy. get this over with. Get it out. Get yeah. It out. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, uh, and thanks for joining us. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Get a look at today's show on our YouTube channel.